Hello! Hello, and welcome. And happy Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy whatever you celebrate. Um, I'm not celebrating today. No way, Jose. This is the official 2019 Harry Partridge Christmas failure stream. I just, I done failed. I flat out freaking failed completely. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, I just got it all over my freaking Cintiq. Christmas Pepsi all over my Cintiq. Ah, oh, there we go. How y'all doing? Um, can you hear me okay? I didn't really do a very good, like, sound check before I did this. Uh, is it good? Do you like the, uh, the low quality Christmas visuals that I have added with the, the snow that falls for 30 seconds and then the loop starts over and it's really jarring and ugly? Or do you like the extremely high res, uh, holly, uh, graphic that I found that's like eating up all of my processing power because it's like this 2,000 pixels across uh, alpha layer, you know, semi-transparent PNG of some holly that I've had to compress down and make very small and it's, um, it's probably eating the processing power. It's probably going to make the stream even worse. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying the extra effort because this, this right now is going to have to make up for the, the lack of, um, the lack of animation this year. I thought that 2019 would be, um, would be the year that I crush it, that I absolutely crush it and release, you know, half a dozen cartoons and come back in style. Um, I didn't make a lot. I've made nearly four cartoons. Only two got released. The big one is still not done. And I thought that December would be a good month where I could um, churn out a quickie, a, a goodie, but a quickie, and uh, get it out in time for Christmas kind of semi-seasonal it's not quite a christmas cartoon but it's kind of a christmas cartoon would make an excellent you know december release but um i failed i completely failed i'm not going to be able to finish in time it's christmas eve and well it's already christmas eve it's christmas day in like 28 minutes so i completely failed the whole thing's fallen apart but i figured what the hey i can still do some animation today i can still get a little something done on a live stream and maybe, maybe two hours of a man losing his mind is uh, better than, you know, a three minute Christmas cartoon. I don't know. Maybe they're about even, maybe one outweighs the other. I'm not too sure. I hope you're all doing very well and having a happy, happy time of year, a happy day, whatever you're celebrating or not celebrating. Uh, all right, let me load in. Let me go. Uh, load image sequence. We're using different animation software today. I usually use Toon Boom. Today we are using Kakani, which is uh, evil, devious, uh, foreign software from China. It's not evil or devious, but it's it's. I haven't quite got it figured out yet. Don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know if I fully trust it, but we're gonna try it today. And why not try it live when I'm under pressure anyway? Why not? Wouldn't that be a good time to do it? You know, we got the, the holiday, the pressure of the holiday, the pressure of being uh, horribly late with this cartoon. You know, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice to just add more uh, Yule logs of pressure onto the great big burning fire that is my life right now and, uh, and make it even more chaotic and, uh, and uh, hot and messy and crackling. All right, let me see. There's a lot of stop animating and focus on making a commentary for every episode of Scooby-Doo says Gaknek. I will gladly do that every episode because it's not like there's very much Scooby-Doo to talk about. Only two or three Scooby-Doo cartoons in existence. Mm. All right. All right. Let's draw some animation. Um, cool thing about Kakani is you can raise or dip the layers of opacity, which I really appreciate. There's a lot of cool things about this software. We're not going to be using them to full effect today, but um, one of the things which I really like it's the auto cling of the lines. See, the lines just cling together like that. They close, the little gaps close. Isn't that cool? What are we drawing here? An infected bosom um, <laughs> with green pustules. Um, oh, see, that one didn't connect. We can go in with the cleanup brush and connect it. Isn't that cool? The cleanup brush is cool too. See, you got little, little stray dangly bits there and you can come in and just whoop, take them away. 
Uh, that's really neat. I wish more animation software would include some of those features, but we're going to turn off the uh, highlight closed regions so that the areas don't fill with color automatically. We don't want that, frankly. Frankly, it's a little weird. Um, and we're just going to try and draw... Uh, can you guess who this is? Can you guess what character this could be? I'm going to try and draw this back. So let's just, let's just blast through this. And... Why is it still showing... <laughs> Highlight closed regions? No. Uh, how, do you t how do you make it not auto color like that? No. As you can tell, Harry doesn't know what he's doing. Um, update region colors? No. Show region colors? Oh, okay. There we go. I thought that was off anyway. So, let me just blast through some of these frames here. And, uh, and we'll get to it. I think I asked already, is the audio okay, guys? Can you hear me all right? I hope so. And, uh, and the Christmas music that I spent maybe slightly too long trying to track down. Can you hear that too? Um, Fred Flintstone guesses Bowser the dog. It is, it is Fred Flintstone, 100%. Don't you just love how the snow keeps just stopping every couple of seconds because the loop doesn't work? Video blocks, God bless them, and paying them far too much money uh, to use their uh, royalty-free videos. And uh, bless them, they couldn't, they, they couldn't do me a pre-keyed snow falling animation that looped. Either it was keyed and uh, you could see me behind the snow or the snow um, would actually loop but you wouldn't be able to see me, it was solid black. So I'm sure there's like a line of code I can use in my streaming software to get it so that, you know, it removes the black automatically, but um, it's probably like a green ski, a green screen, green screen thing, like option, green screen option, but I'm not, that takes, you know, brain cells and, uh, you know, competency. So not for me, sorry. No, thank you, I'm good. All right, let's try and draw this hairy bit that he has on his shoulder. Some would call it fur. Uh, gonna, we're gonna just gonna pump that in, and and the other elbow here, and some muscular muscles. And see, th well, this animation has basically already been done. We're just cleaning it up here. We're just cleaning it up. Gonna use that cleanup brush, which I love. Love that cleanup brush. I love how you can kind of basically draw what you were planning on drawing, but you just draw a crappy, sloppy version of it. <laughs> and then just come in and go zoop 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 and clean it up. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So let's say that we didn't want the actual points of the hair to meet because we were being lazy, come in with that clean up brush. And there you go. Now it's way too long and pointy, but it, it meets up at least. Really like that feature. All right, let me just let me tuck that in there. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, Thomas Andrews says, I hate the snow. Too bad. It's Christmas time. We're leaving the snow effect in. You cannot change the terrible looping, uh, the, doesn't loop in, in fact, the non-looping snow effect. We're keeping it. Hey, Tomagotchi, thank you for coming by. Uh, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail? Yes. Mikhail says, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mikhail. Here's something weird. I was uh, watching a review the other day of the Michael Bay Transformers movie, the first one. And the guy doing the review, a guy called Bob Show, here on YouTube, he made an observation I had never seen before, I'd never heard. Uh, he observed that the name Michaela Baines, if anybody remembers, that's Megan Fox's character in the Transformers movie. Um, her name, Michaela Baines, is very similar to the name Michael Bay. And in a weird way, he kind of put himself a female version of himself, an idealized, perhaps, female version of himself in his own movie. Anybody else pick up on that? I had never thought about that before, but he's right. Michaela Baines, Michael Bay. It does seem uh, suspiciously close. And also a bit, a bit creepy. Just a bit. Alrighty, that is looking pretty good. Let's just finish that off. Do 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 do. Pretty good. We have another sip of this life-shortening soda. 
Mm. Ah. Terranium, hey Terranium, thank you for coming by. Terranium says, when I was little, there was so much snow that if you didn't move your car, it would literally be covered in snow in a couple of days. That sounds like a lot of snow. Um, we don't really get snow around here at Christmas time. We get it around February. February seems to be the snowy time of year. January, February. Um, uh, it would be very nice to have an actually white Christmas. Let me look out the window and see. Nope, it's just damp and black. Um, that'd be very nice to have some snow at Christmas. I don't think I've ever, in fact, had a snowy Christmas because I've spent every Christmas, I think, I think I've spent every Christmas in the UK. I used to go out with a, a girl from Finland. Finland, Finland, Finland. The country I'd quite like to be pony trekking and camping. Having snack lunch in the hall. Uh, that's a Michael Palin song. Anyway, uh, I used to date a girl from Finland, and I think I had Fin. Did I have New Year's? I had New Year's in Finland once. Um, and it's, if there are any Finnish people in the chat, they can confirm this. We did a very strange New Year's pastime, which I have never heard reference of. And maybe this is something that people do in Finland. Or maybe this is something that, that just devil-worshipping cult members do, and that's what her family were, and I didn't know. They did this thing where they got um, lumps of metal solder that you could melt down. They melted it, and they dropped it in a bucket of water. And they made me do this too. And then the idea is that you kind of get this weird random shape made from the metal solder, because it's liquid. Suddenly, though, it's dropped in cold water. It cools off. It solidifies. You get this, like, weird little funky crazy shape made of metal which you then hold up to like a light bulb or a torch and you project a shadow of it on the wall and the piece of melted crude misshapen metal the shadow it casts is supposed to somehow be like your future for the following year so for example if you get a piece of metal that is bent out of shape and looks like you know rabbit ears you might get a pet rabbit that year or if it looks like a horrible mangled piece of metal Maybe in your future you're gonna get into a horrific car accident. So that's the thought behind it. I don't remember what my piece of metal was exactly shaped like. I, I have no recollection. I think I was too busy being surprised by the whole ordeal. But as uh, you're mispronouncing Finland, Finland, Finland? Did I? S how can you? How how you can't mispronounce Finland? It's Finland or Finland. It's one of the two. I think I was saying Finland, Finland, Finland because of the song. Which is how they say it in the song, but it's uh, yeah, it's that's that's how you. It's I know it's Swami. If you're if you live in Finland and you're Finnish, you say Swami. Um, it's tin. Terranium says not actual metal. Okay, okay. To me, tin is metal. But, uh, to me, tin is a type of metal. Is it not a type of metal? I'm not a uh, a metallologist. I don't know about different types of metal, but I thought tin was a type of metal. Now, now, who's the fool? Still me, I guess. All right. That's the thing. We can't talk and draw and animate. It's too hard. It really is. It really is too hard. Uh, but we can go back in and do little bits of drawing on our frames, and then jump back out, and it'll kind of have the same effect if we do a little bit of chat and then a little bit of drawing and then a little bit of chat um, let me see I should probably get to uh, should probably get to viewers um, and the chat what are they saying people are just debating whether or not tin is a type of metal I think it's I'm gonna say it's a metal it's a metal I know we're good we're, we're totally good it's totally a type of metal you keep saying Finn. Terranium is taking issue with my pronunciation of Finland. You keep saying. You can't type it. You can't say, Harry, you're saying it wrong. You're saying Finland. And then type Finland, because that's how I'm going to say it. Finland? It's either Finland or Finland. I know this is a Christmas live stream, but I feel like we've already mentioned uh, Finland enough. I know it, Lapland is more the, uh, more the Christmas place, right? That's where Santa lives, I think. 
The last I heard, anyway. The last time I was there. Visiting him, you know? Hmm. Alright. Yeah, let's try and get some animation done today. That'd be cool. Alrighty. So I'm gonna go in like, I don't know, two, three hours, whenever I'm done with this basically. I'm gonna take some gifts and I'm gonna go over to my mum's house. Which is where I'm going to spend Christmas Day tomorrow with my mom and my stepdad. Uh, no uh, siblings and no romantic partners uh, this year. Joyce is at home with her family. My sister's with her boyfriend's family, I think. Anyway, she's not going to be there. So it's going to be the rare Christmas where it's literally me, my mom, and my stepdad together, which is um, not something I've ever done before, I don't think. And I'm, to be honest, kind of dreading it in a way. Uh, <laughs> I went over there for about an hour tonight and got a little bit of dinner there and now I'm gonna head back in a couple hours but I already had a little taste of what it's gonna be like my mom got an Amazon Alexa for Christmas and I'm all, like I, I can already tell that the flavor of this year is just gonna be watching my mom talk to the Amazon Alexa and not fully understand the um, the format that you should adopt when asking it questions I think she asked it something like, she went, Alexa, what was the name of that film I watched last night? As if Alexa is this uh, omniscient, all-knowing uh, magic device. I said, Mom, Mom, that's not how you do it. She was like, oh, what, what, what was the name of the film? I said, I don't know. Who did it have in it? I had Ricky Gervais. Okay, we'll say, what is the name? I don't know. List Ricky Gervais filmography, or what are Ricky Gervais's most well-known films like you have to ask it a question it's not um a genius it's not um it's not this magical entity uh so that's gonna be fun watching my uh frankly adorable mother uh struggling with technology um i gotta be honest i don't like the alexa i find it a bit creepy i think that the whole the whole thing listening to you at all times waiting for you to ask it a question uh, sending uh, market research very possibly to some sort of Amazon uh, think tank. I find that whole thing a little bit shady. Just a little bit. Because uh, I don't think that it's recording my questions. I mean, I'm not planning to bring down the government or anything. Um, so I don't figure like I have anything to hide. But I, I don't like uh, possibly my conversations you know, being analyzed uh, at least on a sort of AI level and, uh, you know, sort uh, through for keywords in order to market uh, products to me maybe in the future. That, that's, I know that might sound like Alex Jones crazy conspiracy, but, you know, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe that's actually true. Um, also, I get to spend time with my stepdad, who I, who I, I love, and I love my mum, but uh, he does come out with some classics today. He, he, what were we talking about? We were just talking about music in general. And he, he asked me if there were any good rap singers. And I, I howled at the phrase rap singer. I was like, no. <laughs> it's, just say rapper. Just say rapper or singer. Don't say rap singer. It, it's going to show the whole world who you are. They're immediately going to figure out this guy. <laughs> this guy's out of his element. He said rap singer. Boomer confirmed. I mean, they are boomers, literally, but I love them. They're great. Ah. Yeah, actually, my mum did, in front of me, uh, Davi88 said, like, you could ask it who you are. My mum did do that. Uh, I don't know if she'd done it already, like she'd rehearsed it already, but she said, look, Harry, and she went, Alexa, who is Harry Partridge? And Alexa goes, Harry, Andrew Partridge. Wrong. Uh, I, I mean, it, knew, it was like reciting my uh, Wikipedia article. But my name is not Harold Andrew Partridge, or whatever it said, Harry Andrew Partridge. My middle name is not Andrew. My middle name is Genevieve. Uh, no, it's not Andrew. All right, let me finish off this hand. And then I gotta stop talking about my, my loved ones and my parents, which is not what you wanna hear about. And um, 
instead maybe take some questions from the chat very much appreciate you coming by today guys um i don't think this is going to be a particularly fun stream this is me having failed having completely failed to put out uh, a fun christmas cartoon in time uh this is me you know basically doing a hail mary play throwing together a few cheap visuals and some uh, royalty free christmas music and just trying to make something happen before the end of the year isn't that sad it's a live stream excuse me for one second uh. <laughs> uh, Bowser says I want Kilgar to say to Hogstrong a good pirate never takes a good pirate never takes another person's property but we're starbarians so we can take whatever we want you want him to say that oh like a good pirate oh I get it so he's like a good pirate yeah <laughs> would never take another person's property but we're terrible starbarians yeah maybe that would be fun it's a good line. I should hire you. Um. Okay, so what is the hair doing here? We can't. This is like. This is. This is tough. Choo, 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 choo. All right. The Almighty Mexican, thank you for coming by, buddy. The Almighty Mexican says, You never think your streams are fun, so I don't trust your judgment. My streams are not fun. I want to be a video game streamer, guys. Can I tell you something? I've been looking into it lately. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry, it's not going to happen. Uh, don't worry, I will definitely burp into the mic next time. Uh, Plooper. Yeah, uh, I've, been look I've been playing... I bought myself a treat. I bought... I... I bought myself a Christmas present. How about that? How about that, guys? It's pretty rare that I get a treat. Poor old Harry. Downtrodden Harry. Stepped on Harry. I bought myself, yeah, yeah, Beast Wars for the PS1. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beast Wars on the PS1. And yeah, I've got the instruction manual so I can read it when I'm on the toilet. That's what I would consider good reading. Um, what a terrible game. I got it in my head. I was, I was, I, I, the thing was that sparked this all off. And I mean, it's a Christmas live stream, so we should probably talk about Beast Wars on the PS1. The whole thing that sparked it off is I, uh, I like, I love PlayStation 1 games. I love Xbox. Like my, my, uh, my core kind of gaming years were PS1 era through original Xbox. I didn't have a PS2. I had a Dreamcast, but it was like, 97 to 2003 were probably the, the years where I still had enough time to play video games. Um, and I love uh, games based on, um, uh, you know, pop culture, like movies and TV shows and stuff. And I realized I had never played any of the Beast Wars games. And uh, I went and looked at Beast Wars on PS1 and uh, I, I was like, oh, okay, this looks kind of interesting. Let me see if I can find a speed run or a commentary, like a, like a walkthrough or something on YouTube. I found very little. I could not find anybody, anybody, not a single person who'd ever speed run through Beast Wars on PS1. There, ha there are people on YouTube that have played it all the way through, but not, you know, not quick, not really finding any tricks or glitches or whatever to get through it kind of fast, just like a, a normal playthrough. And I thought, well, I'm going to play it and try it out. Maybe I could be, maybe me, you know, little old me could be the first ever Beast Wars PS1 speedrunner. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I have the time to sink into it. Um, I'm not good enough at video games. I don't really want to be a speedrunner. It's too much work, but I don't, I don't think enough reward. You're always going to get beaten by somebody else that has more time to put into it to find strategies and, and, and you know, glitches and stuff. But, um... It's a fun game. Uh, it's terrible, but it's kind of, I don't know, there's something about it that's kind of relaxing. So one of these days, maybe in 2020, and we can talk about 2020 in a little bit, but one of these days uh, I, uh, I will somehow find a way to hook it up and uh, we'll live stream some PlayStation 1 games and I'll show you Beast Wars and uh, we can look at the Maximals campaign or we can look at the Predacon campaign. There are two. There's like, like in uh, Transformers, you have the Autobots and the Decepticons. You've got the good guys and the bad guys, uh, the Maximals and the Predacons in Beast Wars. So I can show you. Uh, it's not a good game, but it's, it's fun for me, you know. Okay. 
Uh, are we going to see bees flying across the screen now? Asks Peterson Cartoonimations. No, but I, I did think about... Well, maybe you were in a previous stream, but... Uh, I did say I think it would be fun to just have, like, a bee go across the screen every couple hours. Not every couple hours. Maybe, like, every 20 minutes or something. A random bee. Um, I don't know. Would I, I'd have to put in a really, really long looping video, I guess, of a bee uh, with, you know, 20 minutes of just completely nothing happening. Just a completely keyed out video uh, that was completely, uh, basically, invisible. And then just occasionally this bee would go past. I don't know how long, but the video would have to be like, would the file size be really big? Sorry, I, I look like I want to buff because I do. Um, if you have a .mov video file that's pre-keyed and nothing happens for 10 minutes, it's just complete silence, complete uh, nothing happening on the screen, does that make the file size big or small? I don't know. These are questions maybe for a digital video uh, expert and not someone like me who is hardly even a Beast Wars on PlayStation 1 expert. I can't even get my head around that game. It's, it's, it's pretty hard. Um, hey! Josh, thank you for coming by. Everyone, Flush Studios in the chat uh, is my good buddy Josh who is working with me. We're working on our main... Uh, we're working on something at the moment. My main cartoon from 2019 that's taken forever and is really overdue in a big way. Uh, he's helping me on a shot uh, in that and we're gonna probably get back on it uh, pretty soon. This this cartoon I'm working on right now obviously is Starbarians related. This is a little quickie that I thought I could pump out by the end of December. I really wanted it to be out before Christmas. We'll see about the end of December. I, do, I just don't know. Uh, but I do know that uh, pretty soon Josh and I are going to work together. So it's good to see you, Josh. Thank you for saying Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas back to you. Um, hope you and your family have a good one. You're a good guy. Guys, check out Flush Studios. Check out Josh if, you, uh, if you're if you not familiar with him. He's an inspirational indie filmmaker and an all-round sweet guy. <laughs> Oh. I got a question for the chat. I'm going to put everything on its head right now and ask the chat what was the fastest breaking Christmas toy you ever received? Now, I'm sure many of you received Christmas to toys. You're probably, only if you're really young, were you too young for toys. I mean, kids today still play with toys, and I know, but. You know, boys around probably like eight or nine, I would I imagine want video games more than toys. But back when I was a lad, when I was eight or nine, all I wanted was toys. Um, video games kind of came a little bit later for me. And I got many, many toys over Christmas, but the, the only one that I remember breaking very quickly, and I broke it the next morning. So I, I broke it on Boxing Day morning. Boxing Day is what we call December 26th over here in the UK. Um, I broke Vacman. Vacman is Stretch Armstrong's uh, arch nemesis, who is kind of like he's not really the opposite of Stretch Armstrong. He he can stretch, but then he has uh, he's made of beads basically. He's filled with beads, and uh, and uh, if you uh, hit the pump on the side of his head. Or you, you, he's got like a little vacuum thing. If you stick the vacuum in his head and pump out the air, um, the beads, the space, the air that creates space between the beads gets sucked out and he goes rock hard. So unlike Stretch Armstrong, he can actually hold his shape. You can stretch him out. He's like this red, gross uh, monster guy. You can stretch him out and, yeet and pull him, pull his arms and legs and stuff, make him more weird looking. And then you can actually get him to stay that way. Well, the, the morning after Christmas day, um, I uh, I broke it. I like the, the end of the vacuum broke off uh, inside his um, headgear, where you like you use it to suck out the air. And uh, I could never ever get him. I could get him to stretch, but I could never ever get him to uh, hold his shape ever again. And I was so mad. I actually I was mad, but I was also kind of scared. Like I was worried that my dad would find out and get mad at me for breaking a toy. So I put him in his box. 
and I put him under my bed, must have been about eight years old, and I didn't tell my dad. It wasn't actually from my dad, it was from my grandmother, I remember. She got me Vac Man, but I put him in my uh, room under my bed, and I think my dad just never asked. He never, he didn't really know what the toy was, he didn't give a shit that I got Vac Man for Christmas, why would he? He's a middle aged man, he doesn't give a shit about Vac Man. Um, I did, but it was broken, and I just, I only uh, ever took him out again maybe two or three times just to forlornly gaze upon his shattered, broken form. Um, and then one day he ended up going up to the charity shop, you know, the thrift store basically. He was given away a couple of years later. So a very sad end for that toy because I think I would have had a lot of fun with Vac Man. And I'd, I would imagine they're very rare now on the second hand secondary market because it's kind of a fragile toy. So I'm sure a lot of people have broken their, their Vac Man. But what about you guys? Did you guys have any toys? Christmas toys that fell apart almost immediately? Let me know, and I can soothe your weary hearts. What is going on here? What? What is this? What's going on here? We want to use the, uh, the cleanup tool. That doesn't like that little bit there. I don't know what's trying to do that. Let me see. Uh, what the heck is Boxing Day? Asks Almighty Mexican. Well, uh, it's the day where we all get together and we uh, punch the shit. No, we. Uh, it's, I think it's, the idea is uh, you're supposed to take stuff that you don't need anymore because you've received presents already. Uh, you box it up. You box up your old stuff. Let's say you've got a new um, pair of trainers, right? You take your old trainers you don't need anymore. You box it up. You give it to the homeless, the poor, the needy, the trainerless, whatever. Um, that's not really how we did it in my family. It was usually an excuse to just get more presents, basically. Either the grandparents would come over if they hadn't come on Christmas Day, or because I come from a broken home, no, not really, but because my mum and dad live separately, uh, I would either go to my dad's on Boxing Day or go to my mum's on Boxing Day. So basically it was an excuse to get two presents. Um, two presents uh, didn't really make up for only half the family. But uh, no, we didn't have. I didn't have half a family. I had. I had basically two families. I had my mum's, my mum, my stepdad, you know, and my dad and my stepmom. So I kind of split off like an amoeba and created two equally large families, um, which uh, does tend to make holidays kind of messy because you don't really know who to spend it with. Uh, some people are funny about actually spending the day with you. Uh, I don't. I can celebrate Christmas on, you know, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or Boxing Day or whenever. I don't. I'm not too fussy, really. Mm. Bowser the dog had Starcom toys. Wow. Yeah, those are cool, uh, but a little bit fragile, maybe. I know. I know what you mean. Uh, the Beast Wars Maximal Combiner broke for Hollow Head, Hollow Cat Head. Excuse me. Um, what else? What else? Immortal MCG says I broke the arm off of my heat blast action figure from Ben 10. It was a week after Christmas a week is still pretty pretty damn recent uh, That's too recent after Christmas. That's a heartbreaker one week with your toy is not long enough um, Ashos says when did you get your Cintiq? Um, I got it I got it like maybe a year and a half ago, maybe just under uh, un under two years maybe even only a year ago Maybe I think more like 18 months, a year and a half. Um, somebody broke a Furby. Yeah, yeah, Furby's pretty fragile. Hey, the rookie! Thank you very much for the super chat. That was really, really generous of you. Uh, you don't need to give me a super chat. You don't. You don't need to. But I appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, the rookie. Happy Christmas to you too. Sam Gay asks Harry, when is the Starbarian's Christmas special? Tomorrow, I bet. Of course. Of course, it's tomorrow. It wouldn't be any other day but Christmas. Of course it's tomorrow. Of course I didn't totally try and make a somewhat Christmassy Starbarians cartoon and completely, completely missed the deadline. This is good. This is good for like emphasizing a point. Completely missed the deadline. Look at this. I'm gonna go cross-eyed now. Uh, ooh, here comes an in-between that Harry didn't want to draw. Harry got real lazy on that one. Um, let's draw this one first. Let's draw this one first, and then I can kind of use the two frames as a way to as a way to uh, find my 
way a little bit. Hey, uh, I got another super chat there from, from, oh man, I can't keep up with all the chat stuff. Um, from the rookie, screw you, I do what I want. All right, thank you, rookie, thank you. Uh, response there to me saying that I did not need the super chat cash, which was true, I did not. You know what I'm going to do, guys? Uh, this is, this is going to come out of left field here. I'm going to save. It's probably a good idea. It's probably a pretty good idea. I don't know. Because otherwise, we're going to get a crash. Let's save it as... Hit save. Alright, nice. Uh, Terranium asks, why is Kilgar puking? Kilgar is not puking. He is spinning around and shouting... I agree with that point! No, he's shouting... No! Or something like that. Oh boy. Um What time is it over here in Blighty? 907. All right, I reckon I'll be done with this one before Depends if we shade it or not. I don't really want to shade it on on live stream. That's like too much work. It's like too much work, man. Um, I might just get done with the animation, but basically he just has to spin. He settles here. He just, let me show you. Let me show you what we're working on here. As I fight back another belch. Basically he spins and goes, no. It's like that. No. So. Uh, so we definitely got to take this frame and render that out nice while I maybe uh, address some of the comments going on in the chat. Maybe talk to some folk. That's what you guys are. You're folk. You're not just folks. You're folk, which can also mean plural. Isn't that weird? It's one of those words like, um, I can't think of another word like that. But where you can have folks, and you can have folk, one has an S on the end, one doesn't, it still means the same thing. Geranium says, when is this cartoon good to go? When is it good to go? When is it good to go? Uh, look, man. Well, look. Look. When Harry Genevieve Partridge has a deadline for the end of December, you know that he's going to get it done by midnight, uh, December 31st, just as the ball is dropping on Times Square, um, except it's December 31st the following year. You know I'm gonna make it, guys. Look, if anybody, uh, doesn't have faith in, uh, my ability to crank out timely, frequent cartoons, just remind yourself, Starbarians 3 took five fucking years. This is why I'm angry today. This is why this seasonal stream of celebration and joy is in fact just a stream of anger and, and, and misery. Uh, because this can't go on any longer. This is awful. Like, I want to make stuff. I want to put stuff out. But you just can't do it alone. You, you've got to, I've got to hire in-betweeners and assistants in 2020. I've got to drop maybe the animation standard a little bit. I've got to find a way to be more efficient. Hey, AD! Thank you so much for the super chat. I'll get back to uh, self-flogging myself in a moment. Uh, AD says, Hey Harry, it's Christmas Eve here. I can't stay. I hope you're doing good despite not making the deadline. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, AD! Thank you so much. You didn't need to give me a super chat. That's way too generous. Uh, AD is already a supporter on the uh, Patreon. So... We really don't need you to support me with super chats on top of that. You don't need to give me any kind of monetary support. Anybody. Uh, you don't certainly don't need to double dip. You can't double dip. You can't go in for the super chat and the Patreon. Because then you're not getting your money's worth two times. So, okay. Just watch it, big guy. Hmm. Alright. Ah. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. DJS five five ninety says twenty hashtag twenty twenty 
is a hashtag make Harry great again. Yes, yes. I would take issue with the again part. I don't think I've ever been particularly great, but uh, yeah, that's it's gonna it's gonna come eventually. Um, we're gonna get. Why why is the fucking okay? This this is the cleanup brush, right? Where if you draw lines that nearly meet but go over one another, it's supposed to clean them up. Why does it not do that? It's not working. It's supposed to like snip the end off. Hmm. It's completely stopped working. Oh, wait, wait, is this it? No. Ah, uh, it's something that I, I've... I fucked it up somehow. I played with the settings in a way I should not have done. And now it, Ooh, that's not that's not good. Now it doesn't want to work. Alright. Alright. Great. One of the most useful tools in the entire program is no longer uh no longer working. I gotta do it the old fashioned way. Hey, uh half ton half it's <laughs> a funny name. Half ton halfling. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh gosh, we have another one from Tomagotchi. Let me get to that in a moment. Uh, Half Ton Halfling says, I can double dip and I will. Question, though. do you st How do you stay motivated to do your projects? Uh, death. Mostly the uh, ever-present uh, threat of death. Because I think I have uh, some talent and some ideas that are worth sharing with the universe before I die. And uh, I know that I'm going to die. Because, you know, I think it's over 60% of, uh, of the world die at some point. Uh, nearly all of us, in fact, and I think I'll be among them. And I just every day I wake up and I think I I'm another day older. Uh, I'm I'm as young as I'm ever gonna be, and as old as I ever have been. And that's true for you guys. Every day you wake up, you're as young as you ever will be again, and as old as you ever have been so far. And I just think if I don't get on it, if I don't make stuff, I'm gonna die, and people will be like, "Who is he? Did he do anything? <laughs> Did he do anything while he was here? No." He didn't really do anything. He just sort of he ate a lot of mince pies. Uh, he played he played Beast Wars for the PlayStation One quite badly. Uh, not good enough to be a speedrunner. Uh, his breath wasn't fantastic, and basically he moved on. And that's I feel what my legacy is going to be unless I get off my high knee, get off my tuckus, and actually put some stuff out there in the world. So that's how I stay motivated, because. Uh, Oblivion is the alternative. Playing uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion all day is the alternative. So guys, we got to a, uh, a super chat came through that I didn't manage to read out. From Tomagotchi. Tomagotchi says, Merry Christmas, Harry. You and Rebecca Parham. Um, I guess it's Parham. 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 Have been huge inspirations to me. Sorry, I've never said a name out loud before, I don't think. Um... But good old Rebecca, I know her uh, uh, a little bit, and she's a lovely lady. You and Rebecca Parham have been huge inspirations that led to me animating. I hope to have something to show for it in 2020. Ah, well, me too, buddy. Uh, of course, when you have something, send it my way. And uh, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, I'll give you a damning critique. No, I won't. Uh, I will watch it, and it'll be very interesting to see what you've made. Thank you. And you've been a, a very nice and... Um, a very consistent supporter of my work. It's funny how how I see people come and go, uh, which is to be expected. But I, I also see a lot of people come by and, and stick by. And I wonder, what are they doing? How come they haven't given up on me yet? It took me five years to make one not very good cartoon. Hmm. All right. All right. Let me let's get this. Let's get this. Let's get this shoe on a toad. That's my. That's a funny way of saying show on the road. Shoe on a toad. It's funny because I've taken uh, uh, words that sound, you know, sonically similar and uh, and and put them in the place of, of the original phrase to create a funny. Fr it's funny, guys. It's a funny thing. It's just funny when you take a phrase that people are familiar with and you change some of the words around. Um, 
it's the kind of thing you should definitely do on live stream. Uh, I'm really funny. Alright. Ah, oh, boy. Let's see what's happening in the chat. Um, Krabzy asks, Hey Harry, why does your Toon Boom look funny? I'm using Kakani today, Krabzy. It's a different program. Um... What are traditional English foods? Asked Burger Boy. Uh, traditional English foods. Peasant. Uh, we do like to eat fresh peasant. Um, I mean, mince pies. I was going to say that's the thing you can't get in America. That's maybe a thing you can't get in America. But um, my other half, Joyce, who is currently visiting her family in the good old US of A., um, she sent me uh, a little stream from, um, like a little video from a supermarket she was in, and they have mince pies over there. And I love mince pies. Um, uh, and the fact that they now seem to have them in America, probably not with a lot of, um, you know, like frequency, there's probably not that many, but at least in the place they were at, which I think was like a Ralph's or a Kroger or something, one of their uh, fancy American grocery stores, yeah, they had mince pies. And there really is no reason for me to live in the UK anymore. If they've got mince pies and PlayStation 1 games uh, play back at 60 FPS instead of 50, I think I'm good to move to America now. I think I'm done here. I think I'm officially done. Hey, Gregor, thank you for coming by. Uh, Gregor the Scot says, Hey, Harry, I can't stay long. Can't even hear you. I'm visiting. I thought I had a tech problem for a minute there. Um, okay, he's just saying he can't hear me, so I don't need to address him. Fuck that. Thank you for coming by, Gregor. You can't hear me, so he's uh, he's watching. Uh, he's watching on silent, I guess, while with his family for Christmas, as he should be, as many of you guys should be, uh, if you celebrate Christmas. You shouldn't be shouldn't be watching a live stream on Christmas Eve. You should be probably watching uh the santa claus 3 the escape clause starring martin short and tim allen <coughs> uh and wrapping presents i gotta stay i love i cannot render this nipple i love uh the thing of wrapping presents while a christmas movie is on and kind of half paying attention to it it's a really cozy vibe today i tried to do that i tried to recreate that I watched uh, the Xena Christmas episode, A Solstice Carol, while wrapping presents, but I was by myself, alone in my house, cold, sat on the floor in a messy room, and feeling very inadequate while I was wrapping presents because I didn't really buy people enough stuff, and it wasn't a very good episode, and it wasn't a very good experience. So I tried to recreate it, and it wasn't fun, but I remember having memories of doing that as a kid, wrapping presents while watching a Christmas movie, and it was really fun. It was a big fun. It was a fun thing to do. Um, hey, Al Turbo Diesel. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you for coming by. All right. Okay. Um, Kevin says, I'm sitting in an automotive shop as my girlfriend's engine exploded. Kevin, you got to ease up on the poor girl. <laughs> you animal, you. I can see why she's with you, though. There's cape there. It's flapping around. But, uh, for reals, I hope hope her engine is uh, unexploded in time for Christmas. That's a very inconvenient thing to happen indeed. Oh, I want to sing, like, Christmas songs, but... The royalty-free Christmas music that I've uh, lovingly applied to this live stream so that you guys have a backing track. Uh, I don't know what song is currently playing, so... Uh, and I can't hear it, so... There needs to be a way I can actually hear what the live stream music is, because then I can sing along with it. Nacho Hamburg says, My family is at Walmart. I'm rapping and crapping while I'm watching. Rapping and crapping. Um, I think you mean Christmas rapping, which would begin with a W, but I like the idea of you, you know, creating a, a funky 
funky set of uh, rhymes and lyrics while while taking a big dump. Oh, see the the cleanup tool works now for whatever reason. It's annoying. All righty. So I was going to go around my mum's house tonight because I'm staying there. She gave me a key. Uh, I'm going to go and let myself in when everyone's gone to bed. Probably around like, I don't know. I could leave in like two hours, but I kind of don't. It's pretty boring there. <laughs> it's nothing to do. Uh, so I might just give it another hour or two. Maybe play a video game. Maybe take a little break for myself because I don't get to do that too much. Uh, I have uh, spent most of the last couple of weeks, uh, maybe two weeks, no, 11 days. The last 11 days I've spent away from Joyce, because Joyce is with her family. And you would think like, oh yeah, you know, uh, bachelor lifestyle, going to be reckless for the last couple of, you know, reckless while the wife is away. I haven't done anything fun. All I've done is work. All I've done is work. Uh, washing up because I don't understand the uh, the dishwasher. Um, try to get the printer to work. My bastard printer. I just gave up on it completely. And uh, animated basically 12 hours a day, which is insane. But uh, I only had one takeaway. I would think I would have, you know, gotten really fat from uh, uh, junk food. I think I did. I think I have gained a bit of a weight while she's been away. But it's all been just crap I bought at the supermarket. I didn't do any fun junk food. And I haven't played any video games. I only put like a, maybe an hour into Beast Wars on the PS1. So, you know. I need a break. I think I'll take a break tomorrow. But I'll be, you know, celebrating Christmas at my mum's. Which means I can't play video games all day. Because they don't have anything there. I can't hog their one TV. Can't bring over, you know, the Xbox and like hog their TV. So my, my one day off... My first day off of the year is going to be spent on my mum's sofa, I guess. Just eating. That's the one thing I can definitely do at theirs. Because it looks like they bought enough. They, they have enough food for like... If Jabba the Hutt was Greek and he was going to have a wedding to another Greek Jabba the Hutt. That's how much food there would be. Uh, a Greek Hutt wedding. There's a lot of food at my uh, at my mum's house. God knows who's going to eat it. Well, I was going to say, God knows who's going to eat it all. It's going to be me. Because my, my stepdad is is a very trim guy. My mum is exceedingly thin and trim. Uh, there's almost nothing of her. And the only other person who's going to be there is this big fat lummox. So that's what I'm going to be doing, I guess. Eating. A lot. Oh, boy. So... That's my plan for tomorrow. Eat like a pig. You know, uh, my mum did actually get some mince pies in, as I was saying earlier. Big fan of the mince pie. And, um... And they were a bit too good. I had one earlier. While I was over there. A bit too high quality. And this is something... God bless her. She heated it up in the oven. It's really nice. She heated it up in the oven, and she served it to me with ice cream. That's not how you eat a mince pie. At least that's not how I eat a mince pie. I eat a mince pie. I don't even take the tray out of the box. Just take it out enough to get access to it. Scoop it up and just inhale it in one bite. Don't heat it up. If you heat it up, it's not... It's like the sugar kind of melts and caramelizes and gets stringy. It's uh, it's not nice. Um, it's, way, it's too... It feels like you're eating something kind of almost healthy in a way. And I don't want that from a mince pie, so I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to um, let her down gently, and tell her that uh, if I eat any more of her mince pies, and I will, uh, they're gonna have to be served cold, and uh, just quick and dirty, just in my hand, paper towel. Don't need a bowl, don't need a spoon, don't need ice cream, don't be heating it up or anything. Um, all right, well that that frame looks pretty good, so now I can probably tackle this one. Alrighty. You know, I was thinking a while ago, I used to have a theory that if you, um, if you cleaned up, 
if you do rough animation but you like this is for example this is a rough animation frame it's actually pretty clean though like that wouldn't take me too much brain power to clean up i used to think that the more you prepared and cleaned up your rough frames the easier it would be at the cleanup stage to actually get your final lines but what happens is and this is my new theory is that in fact because this is already so close to being cleaned up what happens is I'll go in and I'll try very carefully to actually recreate those lines and it's like takes extra time because I'm essentially drawing the same image again my new theory is that I still need to do that on some frames so I know I have a roadmap to what the final image is going to look like but a frame like this has basically only the loosest impression of what the character looks like I've only put in just general guides now that I don't have to be so precise in matching exactly uh, the uh, lines established by a very polished looking rough frame, in some ways it's kind of quicker because I, I can't draw each line five times needing to match up exactly the image that uh, I've drawn on the layer below. I actually don't even have that guideline anymore to uh, compare it to so it might be quicker to do it this way. Um, for most frames, so that's probably the habit I need to establish in 2020. Our Lord's Year of 2020. Oh, this is see, oh, this is me saying I'd be able to do it quickly. Didn't like that eyelid at all. All right, so let's have a little look. Have a little look at the Christmas uh, chat. See what's going on. Um, hey, Jim, Jimbly. Jimbly says, holy fuck, keeping it seasonal, it's a holy fuck, holy fuck, I didn't know you streamed, it's good to see you, Harry, been a fan of yours for ages, thank you, Jimbly, thank you for coming by, Kevin said, I assume a mince pie is different from the Aussie mince meat pies we get here in Canada, yeah, it is, I think the, uh, the deal was that mince meat in a pie was something that was, for some reason, made kind of illegal in Britain, uh, we're talking about medieval, sort of feudal Britain here, and only lords could eat that type of food. So the locals made their own using fruit. Locals, sorry, peasants, you know, peasantry, uh, poorer folk basically would have, uh, this is uh, uh, probably bullshit, but I think the idea is that it was kind of an imitation of a meat pie, but made with fruit. So they're basically little fruit pies made with, you know, currants and kind of a, a fruit jam uh, and lots of sort of Christmas type seasoning like cinnamon i love them anyway i can only eat them at christmas time that's really the only time that they're available i'm sure you could buy them all year round if you wanted but i would much rather keep them i keep i keep seasonal with the shit i would much rather keep it for christmases only because that's you know i'm a sentimental guy and um but i mean yeah when it's december all bets are off i try and not eat a christmas pie until december they usually tend to bring them out in november october time because that's just how christmas is these days kind of, you know it arrives very early but um i uh i uh, b b try to wait until december and then it's like push on the meat on the mince pies i love them they're they're great i should probably try and limit myself to maybe like 10 throughout the whole season but it's it's more like it's probably on average about three a day which is you know it adds up big time So, let me... Uh, what is the... What's the mouth doing there? Something like that. Uh, Hollow Cat Head says, do you think there are going to be rampant memes about 2020? Um, I mean, I've already seen, no lie, about 412 people make the 2020 vision joke. Like, I guess my New Year's resolutions are going to be my vision for 2020. Hey, I hope in 2020 I get better vision because of 20. I just, oh, it's, I've seen that so many times. I'm not suggesting people do this, but if you, let's say you're a, you, you run a comedy Twitter or you try and tweet funny things, 
If you can think of a funny joke that's... And that's not even a funny one. But if you can think of a joke that's very obvious, kind of do a search. Try and find another way of phrasing it. Uh, or a couple of ways of phrasing the same joke. And do a search and see if you you can find other people making that joke. I've had ideas before for jokes. And I've searched them online and found that joke already in existence. And it can be, it'd be a little bit disheartening. Because you kind of feel like, damn, you know, the idea really you know did come from me. But it just it turns out other people already got there before me. And that happens all the time in comedy. It doesn't mean that you ripped somebody off if you came up with the same idea for a joke. Because two people can both you know naturally come to the same conclusion and both think of, of the same joke independently of one another but um yeah it's i would ch if hundreds of other people are making the same joke maybe back off maybe that's not an original enough take or an original enough idea i forget the guy's name but um the, the actor who's in the original karate kid that died this year plays the one of the cobra kai kids who screams out uh you know they like, put him in a body bag, yeah! Uh, and when this guy sadly died this year, just fucking hundreds of people on Facebook and Twitter were making the, oh, guess it's time for a body bag joke about this poor guy, which A, isn't funny, because it's, oh, it's like, this guy's dead. Have some fucking respect. B, um, everyone was making that joke. And C, it doesn't even make any sense. Everyone die. It's not like this guy, this guy dying is, uh, is somehow somehow unique to him. You know, it'd be funny if uh, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of like uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like a funny death in a movie, um, or like a funny line. Let's say uh, you know I don't know. Let's say Harrison Ford. You know got like choked to death on a snake like maybe then you could because it's like oh that's kind of unique to him you know he hated snakes in indiana jones and now he's choked on a why would he be eating a snake maybe he got bitten by a snake or killed by a snake maybe then there would be a, a strange enough coincidence you could justify that joke the only coincidence here is that somebody whose line of dialogue related to death then happened to die well guess what everyone dies at some point at least 60 percent of people die at some point in their life uh as as we specified earlier so i thought that was really lame of people to make that joke over and over i don't know why i'm spending so much of my energy talking about it but uh, it bothered me and this is my one opportunity to really let off about it really complain really stink up the place with my uh my bitterness and my anger Let's not talk about the new Star Wars film, by the way. <laughs> Harry, says Nacho Hamburg. Are there any other animation software besides Flash that are free? Blender is free. You can do 2D animation in that. Uh, Synfig, I think is free, right? Synfig or Open, no. Is it Synfig? Look up Synfig, S-Y-N-F-I-G. Look up Blend Blender's 2D animation. Look up Open Tunes with a Z on the end. Uh, I'm pretty damn sure that's free as well. So there you go. Flash, Open Tunes, Synfig. Or you can get Toon Boom, which you can get Toon Boom Harmon Harmony Essentials for $15 a month. It ain't too bad. Come on, let's be honest. 15 bucks a month. That's the cost of one enormous cup of coffee that you could drown in. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's get on with the. Dark Knight 072 says, everyone dies. No, no, no. So, look, the research has been done. Only 60% of people die at any point in their life. Do the math, okay? I can think of hundreds of people that are still alive today, myself included. Therefore, <laughs> before I'm part of the. Does anyone know what percentage of people that have lived through, like, how many people have lived in history versus how many people are alive today? I have a feeling it's some shocking uh, number, like, I know there's about 7 billion people on the planet today, most of which seems to be in town today doing their Christmas shopping. Um, if you ask me, they all, no, actually it wasn't that busy today, it was busier yesterday, but, um, 
Uh, I feel like there's, you know, nearly 7 billion, 6 billion people on the planet today. I have, I have a feeling it's something terrible, like only 10 billion people have existed in history altogether, and now 7 billion are alive at the same time. You know, something crazy like that, but I could be way off. If anyone knows that number, or can be bothered to research it, uh, let me know, so I don't have to waste my time looking it up, because for at least the next 8 seconds, I'm casually interested in knowing the answer to that. Terranium says we're getting closer to 8 billion now. That's not, that's not good, man. Three percent of people have lived in history, but only naught point. Yeah, Cyric. Sorry, I guess you're making a joke with that. I, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm too tired to read it and get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. A uh, hundred trillion? No, that's not right. There's not. There's not been a hundred trillion people, Hollow Cat Head. You're way off. Fuck it. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up. All right. How many people have ever lived? I'm going to say it's low, like 10 billion. Recent estimates of the total number of people who have ever lived are in the order of 100 billion. That's still pretty low, I guess. It's way more than I thought it was. I thought it would be maxed, like 70 billion. Okay, so there's 8 billion people nearly alive on the planet right now. Uh, and there have been 100 billion... Uh, total or something close to that still quite high um i don't want to get political but i think there's a lot of people in the world i i would be okay with there being less and i don't mean culling the ones that are already in existence i just mean unless you can have really cool kids no, I'm not against people having babies. By the way, don't 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 come away with the wrong idea. I think uh, I I uh, most everyone I know who has had a kid, like right on, they should have had a kid definitely. It's just oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not an easy situation to solve. There's just a lot of people in the world, and they all need food. What you gonna do? Okay, all right, let's get off that. Uh, somebody asked me earlier if I if I have any Christmas movies I like to watch this time of year. I will say um, that I have a couple of faves, but I didn't really get to them this year. I love the 1970 Albert Finney version of A Christmas Carol. Um, Starring Alec Guinness. Obi Wan Kenobi. Starring Alec Guinness as the Force Ghost of Bob Marley. Uh, Scrooge, who's the Force? Uh, it's it's a musical. The music is, wow, the music is fantastic. Albert Finney is kick ass in it. He looks strangely like a young Donald Trump. Um, not even a particularly young Donald Trump. Kind of like Donald Trump of ten years ago. Look up Albert Finney Scrooge, and tell me if you think he looks like Trump or not. Uh, again, not getting political, I'm just saying they physically look like each other. Um, uh, and, like, yeah, I love that movie. I grew up with that movie as a kid. Scared me uh, when they fly over London and they're all the ghosts. That terrified me that bit. Um, but it's a good movie. And um, I watched A Christmas Story this year with Joyce, which I've seen before. I like that movie a lot, but that's not, it's not really an English tradition. That's more of an American tradition, watching that film. Uh, it's a couple of crap uh, bad films I like. I really like The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I just like Tim Allen. Um, I haven't seen it for a couple of years. Though. I wouldn't mind watching it this year, in fact. I could I could go for that. Uh, although the one thing about that movie that I can't watch anymore is the scene where he wakes up fat and goes to the office because he gets on the scales and he's 192 pounds. I'm 200 pounds right now. And you look at how fucking fat Tim Allen looks in that scene where he's got the grey, uh, um, uh, like, sweatpants on. 
and everyone in the office is kind of like, <gasps> you know, they're all amazed at how big he is. That guy is eight pounds lighter than I am right now. So either Tim Allen is, you know, four foot three, or um, or they were really off the mark. Or um, I am secretly turning into Santa, and I'm gaining weight at a rapid pace. I, I need to I need to get on the diet. I've gained like nearly not nearly twenty pounds. I was 183 earlier this year, and I'm 200 right now. So your boy's got to get serious. Uh, Joe's shocking tune says, "Did you get a chance to see Klaus?" I mean, I got a million chances to see Klaus. Uh, I just haven't seen it yet. It looks too good. I don't like good animation. <laughs> it looks it's too fancy and good. Ah! I look, look. It looked beautiful from an animation standpoint. But I'm not an animation fan. Like, I don't go and watch a lot of animated movies. Um, just because they're animated. Uh, I, I tend to care more about subject matter than the medium in which something was created. And the subject matter of Klaus doesn't interest me particularly. Uh, if it was about, you know, like, monsters and, you know, like, people's spines getting ripped out. If they'd made a Mortal Kombat animated movie in the style of Klaus... I would be there on day one. If they took the Beast Wars PS1 game and animated it with the Klaus animation, or if they'd taken the Klaus plotline and animated it like the Beast Wars uh, PlayStation 1 game, I would. I think I would have preferred both of those strange outcomes uh, uh, as opposed to the film that we actually got, which just looked looked kind of uh, not my thing. A bit too friendly. A bit too, a bit too weepy. I like. Uh, I'm saying uh, there are Christmas, people are asking what Christmas movies you like. I can name them, but uh, I guess I guess a lot of it's nostalgia. Like I'm not in the mood for creating new uh, favorite Christmas movies. I realize that Klaus is probably not too different to something like A Christmas Carol in terms of its tone and its message. But um, yeah, I just didn't want. Yeah, I don't. I'm done finding favorite movies. Favorite Christmas movies. I can stick with the old ones, and I think that's fair enough because Christmas is really a time of tradition, and I think that you have nostalgia for certain things. And um, yeah, Terranium says with the anim animation of Klaus, but with monsters and some horror elements. Sign me up. I agree, uh, Terranium. Peterson Cartoonimation says Harry talking about spines being ripped out as we wish you a Merry Christmas. Plays in the background. It's a uh, match made in heaven. The Donkey Kong Country TV show with Klaus's animation style. The Donkey Kong Country TV show, if that's the one I'm thinking of with the, the early sort of 3D CGI animation, is, is uh, that has high ironic comedy value. I'm generally not a huge fan of irony and comedy, but it's, it's pretty special. Um, I think everyone would agree with me. It's not a good show to watch, but it's got great uh, mimetic potential. Why can I just, I cannot get like a smooth line, is it? Can I use something like that? No. Why is, why is this? Hmm. This used to be able to get nice curves. Yeah, look, they're all wonky, look at them. It's one line. Uh. We can go and correct it, but all right. Uh... By the way, guys, tell me if the Christmas music stops. I just realized I don't know if I have it set up to actually loop properly. I think it's an hour, but um, Uh, Tony Studios asks, what is your favorite animated movie? <laughs> I like Vampire Hunter D. <laughs> um, uh, it's pretty cool. I like, um, gosh. Animated movie. I, mean, I like Hercules. I would love another animated movie like Hercules. And I like Aladdin. Uh, that's probably my favorite some of my favorite Disney movies. I know that maybe they don't have the the, the cred of being from the golden age or whatever uh, and people make fun of uh, sort of that 
you know the 90s ness of something like hercules but i love that that it, it, it still has i feel like those are movies that really are for everyone you have princess characters you have comedy you have some action you know you have music it feels like frozen is basically not for everyone i feel like the frozen movies are this kind of uh slightly it's like they're a little bit they're more feminine but they're more um i can't put it into words i feel there's like a sort of a slightly look down your nose at fun element in frozen even though they sort of try to be fun i i, I feel like it's sort of has like a contempt for like good old-fashioned fun i feel like it's more of this kind of slick modern too cool for school uh sort of attitude i don't like about i don't find them friendly and warm i don't know it's frozen it's not warm uh, i i get it yeah i i don't just there's something about them that doesn't want bring me towards them uh tangled i like more i feel like tangled has more it's sincerity i think is what it is so in terms of like new cgi movies i would prefer tangled i like the original incredibles like toy story i mean i like i like a lot of um i like a lot of animated movies i was just trying to think of something more esoteric vampire hunter d is pretty cool uh yeah like what disney used to make uh i don't know think of something like um atlantis or treasure island i feel like disney used to try to uh placate young men and boys with their cartoons more you know something like um atlantis or or hercules there's a bit of action in it there's a bit of drama you know there's beasts and there's or there's you know shootouts or something they just don't, don't seem to do that anymore. It's like they figured out that we've got girls covered with Disney movies and princesses. We've got boys covered with Star Wars and Marvel movies. And they don't really care about making animated movies for boys anymore. I guess maybe the, the some of the CG movies like Big Hero 6 or Incredibles 2 still have that action stuff. But they don't quite have the grit uh, like of... Atlantis, for example. Atlantis, you know, has like people firing guns and explosions and people getting punched and falling out of zeppelins and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I, Atlantis is a pretty badass film. I don't, I don't love it. I don't think it's that entertaining, unfortunately. But I think it's a fun enough ride, and I kind of respect what it was trying to do more than I respect the finished uh, thing. Uh, Davy eighty eight said Harry liked Rapunzel's naked feet. Ah. The, the foot fetish is something that I don't think anyone could ever peg me with because I don't think there's any evidence of I, mean, I guess I guess there are naked feet in Starbarians because they walk around the ship naked but I uh, I'm not into not into feet never got the appeal of feet they're big ugly ugly lumpy things um, not down with feet particularly I was, I really laughed. There was a while ago, I, I had to draw um, the characters from the Extreme Dinosaurs. And I like Google searched reference pictures of them. And the only thing that came up was pictures of this one. I think it was like one particular character. I can't remember who it was. But I Googled him. And all I, could, all I got was pictures of his f fucking dinosaur feet from some, I guess, some fetishist that had compiled all these images of their, uh, you know, every time he was in shot his feet were in shot they, they made like a nice compilation of pictures of his big stupid blue dinosaur feet and it just made me laugh so hard somewhere out, someone out there is really look i'm not trying to kink shame anyone but someone out there is really into big blue dinosaur feet and just not even well drawn you know it's a saturday morning a crappy mid 90s saturday morning animation which i love but i'm not going to say that it's uh anything about that quality of artwork is is arousing um particularly so i just thought that was kind of funny um we know what harry's into since geranium remember the avatar animation I, I i watched that the other day for the first time in a couple of years and i i, I kind of like that card thing i think it's quite fun um what was it that alex jones said he had that gif or that meme from a couple of months back where he's he got accused of uh being a pedo i think and his, his defense was like i'm not a pedo 
I like great big tits and great big asses. <laughs> Which is honestly, it's the best response to have. But uh, I'm more in that camp than the foot camp. Not the pedo camp, the, the Alex Jones camp. Which is not, if you believe him, if you don't believe the accusations, the tits and asses camp. That's where we are. All right, so. Uh. I don't know what his hair is doing really here. <sighs> Harry is a thigh guy. I didn't, uh, not always, but yeah, yeah, but not always. It took a while. It, it was a, it was a journey for many years. Um, Alex Jones is a gift. He's a Christmas gift. Going to Goblin's Nest with Goblin Vomit, Goblin Blood, Blood. His, his voice is so, like, beefy. It's like somebody put ham Hamburger Helper into a voice and beefed it up. Alright, uh, what are we doing here? We got the, uh... The hairy... Harry Pauldron there. Harry Pauldron and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, uh, that's sort of not what we want, is it? Oh, it'll do. Oh, kind of have a, a bit of a tit there. Great big tit and great big ass. Um, Alright, there we go. And then this. Something like that. Whatever. Just get, just get it done, Harry, so you can go bed. It's Christmas Eve! I'm like Bob Cratchit. I'm working on Christmas Eve, but unlike Bob Cratchit, I've willed it upon myself. I should be hanging out with Tiny Tim before he dies. I should be poking his little gimpy leg and going, Do you feel that, Tim? Do you feel that? Does any, anybody think it's weird in the, in the Muppet Christmas Carol that Tiny Tim is like a frog person? I just, they never mention that in the book, that he's a tiny, uh, tiny crippled frog man in the Muppet's Christmas Carol. Is that in the book? Actually, I was, I, I'm kidding. I have read A Christmas Carol. It's not, it wasn't a book. I think it was published as a serial publication in, in a newspaper on kind of old-fashioned magazine. Uh, it's really good though. I really do, I do like the story a lot. Although the one thing that I don't appreciate is how as I'm getting older, I kind of, uh, kind of starting to feel more like Scrooge and it's harder and harder for me to watch adaptations of that story um, and not like just go, yeah, it's kind of got a point there. He's kind of got a point there. These people bothering him, asking him to give to charity when he's already heavily taxed. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I get you, Scrooge. Um. Do the Starbarians celebrate any holidays? Oh, hey, I, I always appreciate Starbarian lore questions because it's completely pointless. There's barely any Starbarians in existence. There's only three episodes and they're over in the blink of an eye. It feels so cheap to go into law and talk about law before they exist. You know, the law is before the law has been established properly. But Hogstrong and this this is not anything to do with this cartoon. You don't you won't see it in this cartoon, you know, or in any cartoon for a long time. Hogstrong does celebrate Christmas. I have decided that in that universe Christmas does exist. But wait, you know, wait to... S don't take it from me. Maybe one day it'll be in a cartoon. Chris, uh, Kilgarians do not celebrate Christmas. K Kil Kilgarians only celebrate the kill! Um... And, uh... And... And Intergalactic Peace Day! 
What do you do on that day? We kill small things. See, they're taking it easy on Intergalactic Peace Day. Anyway, <laughs> back to work. Back to work, Harry. Alright, so we got one, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can do seven frames today. It's still, it's not going to be enough. Um, we're not going to finish this whole shot today. Uh, it's a shame that we can't, we, maybe we could finish it on stream, but I'm getting kind of tired. And I want to not, you know, <laughs> I want to stop working soon. Um, Jimbly asks, is Hogstrong a closet Christian? Um, oh, my hair. Uh, is he a closet Christian? Uh, no, I mean, I celebrate Christmas, and I wouldn't explicitly say I'm Christian, but I'm more of a, um, this is going to sound very, uh, this is going to sound lame. I would, I call myself like a cultural Christian. I don't uh, ascribe to the uh, actual belief, but I love Easter. I like the Ten Commandments. I'm on board with them for the most part. Uh, I try to be a good person. I love, you know, Easter and Christmas and stuff. Um, so I feel like Hogstrong is, is kind of in that camp. And I think you can celebrate Christmas without, you know, actually believing, which is what I do. I like presents and turkey. Um, all right. Alright, back to the grind. Come on. I just tried to open Flash so we could, um, we could, uh, import the frames into it when we're done. But in fact, we're not going to be able to do that because this is PNG. Uh, Kikani, which is the animation software I'm currently using right now, it exports to, um, it exports to, uh, PNG images, which we don't want. We're not going to be able to, you know, easily view those in Flash. We could if we wanted, but, uh, anyway, let's just get on with the animation. Um... Hollow Cathead says like an agnostic. I guess kind of like an agnostic. I uh, People make fun of that term, but I don't think it's, it's a hugely embarrassing term. It just means that you don't, like you would believe it if you had uh, evidence that you found convincing, right? I don't think that's a terrible, uh, terrible mindset to have. I think that's a reasonable mindset to have. Like I'm agnostic with most things, right? I don't really believe in you know ufos and stuff but you know i feel my my dad i love him to bits believes fully in ufos and government conspiracies to uh hide their existence he is fully on board with that he does not make that a secret uh and he often asks me about it and he kind of he wants to know my opinion on it but he's sort of interested in why I don't believe. Like he says, or he wants me to really confirm it either way. He's like, you think this is crazy, don't you? Or do you? You know, tell me, why Why don't you believe? Why, why don't you want to talk more about this? And I, my answer to him is legit. This is the answer I'd give to anyone is, uh, I would totally believe it if I saw the evidence for it that was right in front of me and I couldn't argue with it I would believe it but I don't feel like there's any reason for me to believe it in my life right now when that belief doesn't really bring me any advantage like I completely can see there being alien life forms out there that are intelligent enough to traverse the stars have they come here I don't know like, I don't know how my TV works I can't tell you whether or not space travel it, uh, at that level is a possible b um uh you know well i guess it's just po po but possible likely they came here they would want to contact us they would want to have some dealing with us i can't i can't answer any of those questions okay i struggle uh running animation software i struggle paying rent uh, i struggle making sandwiches i struggle with little things and I can't possibly uh, wrap my head around, are there aliens? I don't refuse the idea that they've, that they've come here. I don't say, like, that's impossible. I'm just saying, yeah, maybe, but I just don't worry about it too much. Because I don't feel like that is a question that uh, I can prioritize trying to answer in my life. Until they are upon us 
or invading or benevolently bestowing us their technology in a way that uh, is confirmed. I just don't worry about it. So that's my answer about are UFOs real? Uh, I don't reject, and I feel that way with, you know, religion or ghosts or whatever. My sister, I think, believes in ghosts, and I used to really laugh at her for it. But now I feel like, honestly, I just, I don't want to laugh at any belief too hard because I feel it's a little bit arrogant. Yes, I don't believe in ghosts, but fuck it. If I met one, I'd go, okay, <laughs> I guess I was wrong about that. I think anybody that has any other position is, is sort of, well, I don't think they're being honest because I think everyone would change their mind if the evidence uh, came, to, came to meet them one day. I at least believe in my own faculties for the most part. I don't believe that my own brain would lie to me, but it could. Someone could convince me, uh, I'm sure, with, with smoke and mirrors and technology I didn't understand, they could convince me that I was meeting a ghost when in fact I wasn't. I mean, they, they, they say all the time that the technology of today is really the magic of yesterday, or the technology of tomorrow is the magic of today. You know, people a thousand years ago would think that, you know, MP3 players or whatever were proof of the divine. Uh, uh, we know otherwise. Anyway, let's talk about silly stuff. Um... Burger, Burger Boy says, ask him if Epstein didn't kill himself. Don't, man. That got brought up today. And this wasn't between me and my dad. This got brought up earlier today when I was visiting my mum's. Uh, I won't say what happened, but uh, yes, that was contentious. Uh, and again, I, I'll, I totally think he could have done that. He could. He, he, I totally think someone could have bumped him off. There was a motive, clearly. I think someone to turn around and say definitely didn't happen. I don't think that's honest. No, you know we don't know for sure. Scrubs like us. So I feel to shut it down a hundred percent isn't completely honest. Look, maybe he just had, he was filled with guilt and remorse for the terrible things he did and took his own life. Um, what are you guys talking about? Are you talking about voice acting? Gralock. I think, uh, I think you're asking about my dad there. Is he an atheist? Yeah, big time. Big time. My dad is 100% an atheist. Uh... Hey, Senator Grape, thank you for coming by. A merry festivus to you and to the rest of us. Harry, been lurking a while. I picked up a few gifts for myself today, one of which I'm pretty sure you recommended. Uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way and the Making of Aladdin. Yeah, I don't know about the Making of Aladdin, but How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way is a fantastic book if you just generally want to learn to draw. It doesn't even require that you care particularly about how to draw, you know, comics the Marvel Way. Just, it's a really good how to draw book. It's nicely written. It's nicely illustrated by John Buscema. Buscema? I think. Buscema, I think. Uh, like Steve Buscemi. 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 How do you say his name? Anyway, How to Draw Comics from Marvel Way. It's great. If you want to learn to draw, get that book. Oh, lordy. Show how much is done for this cartoon, asks Terranium. At 
the end of the stream. Ah, uh, no. Because <laughs> it's it takes too much explanation. I don't make everything very linear. You know, like one shot is half finished, then another shot doesn't exist, and then another shot is not in the place it should be, but it's one quarter finished, then another shot is animatic. I can't just let it play and, and you know, give you a, a fun 30 second. I, 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 let me I, let me show you something. Um, do I have audio input capture, me, uh, capture device, desktop audio? Okay, let me let me see. Can I show you? Let me show you this. What sequence I'm working on? I'll turn off the Christmas music if I can get this to play. Okay. Actually, I'll leave it. It's fine. Alright, this is a little sequence I've been working on. Alright, here's, here's, this is not the whole cartoon. Obviously, this is literally just a little sequence I'm working on. I think it's kind of funny. Are you ready? Let's go. Well, let's just... Well, that's okay. That's a little bit quiet. Sorry, it's a little bit quiet, guys. So, environment and injury are no threat. What about diseases? Diseases are... Oh, damn it. The layers are turned off. Harry. Harry, what are you doing? Do it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's that's at least a sequence you can watch, but the rest of it is like, you know, things are more complete in many instances, but way less complete. This scene is fully animated, but there's no shading and no color yet, so it's going to be a bitch to do that. I'll let you see it one more time, and then I'll get back to work. So, environment and injury are no threat. What about diseases? Diseases are terrified of Kilgarians. Lack of sleep? Kilgarians are terrified of sleep. And how do you deal with extreme hunger? Well... There we go. Alright. Alright, cool. Right. Where's that Christmas music? Put it about there. You let me know if that's too loud or too quiet. Let me close that. Close that up and get back to work. Hey, Merry Christmas, Lappin. Thank you for coming by. We were lacking Lappin. And now, he's happened. Has lappened. Okay. Now, we do do do. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, no. No! Tidy up there a little bit. Let me come back to the chat. It's time to talk. Hey, Sardonic Samurai. Steve, thank you for coming by. Merry Christmas to you too, buddy. Hope you enjoy the uh, extra seasonal, uh, I was going to say, flourishes, blemishes that I've applied. The Christmas hat, Christmas music, the um, sprig of holly. 
Um, all right, all right. Let me let me just do some work. What am I stalling for? It's nearly Christmas. Consarn it. You know there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas, guys. The greatest gift they'll get this year is life. I mean, there's not going to be snow in many parts of the world. There's not even going to be snow here where I live, in miserable, cold, wet England. Sure, the weather in Africa, for the most part, is quite nice. And the greatest gift that they'll get is life? Gotta be honest. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an essential uh, thing, is life. It's probably better than a game of Jenga. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock it life. I wouldn't trade it in for, you know, um, a Stretch Armstrong or Stretch Armstrong's easily broken toy nemesis, Vacman. And the whole thing about do they know it's Christmas time at all, I know there's a lot of Christians in Africa, but I, I thought the majority is Muslim. Why would they need, why would they want to celebrate Christmas? I don't know. Just that whole song. I remember hearing that a couple of years ago. Uh, feed the world. Do, do, do. While I was in a, um, I was at an all-you-could-eat Chinese buffet in December. And I just remember thinking the irony of, of hearing that song while all these, you know, fat people in the West stuffed themselves with Chinese food. It was lovely, though. I highly recommend going to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet, especially around Christmas time. It's just a very nice, it's a very nice match. It's kind of like uh, the end of uh, a Christmas story, but you know, for people who uh, have an eating problem. That's the cape right there. That's what we've decided. Most of the Christians live in South Africa, I think. Uranium, you're probably correct. I don't know. My uh, kind of cultural geography leaves a lot to be desired. Animation is Mr. Scrooge, and you are Bob Cratchit. I think I made that reference earlier, uh, Steve, but yeah, I mean, that's totally how I feel. For some reason, I read that as you are Bob Clampett. I wish I, wish I was Bob Clampett. Uh, I guess animation was a, a bit of a Scrooge to old Bob Clampett, but no, I, uh... Yeah, I feel like Bob Cratchit. More like Bob Crotchet. Uh... If Bob Cratchit was just a big talking groin, he would be Bob Crotchit. <laughs> and uh, what could Scrooge be? I don't know, Mr. Scrooge. Just like a, a, a remake of Christmas Carol where all, all of the characters are uh, genitals. Bob Crotchit, Mr. Scrooge. I would, I would, I think I would enjoy that. Oh, this is not good. Is it frozen? It has. It's not fro- Yeah, this isn't good. So my Cintiq right now is not working. It's not getting anything to move. Uh, let's give it a minute. Maybe hit save, maybe. Odd question about Starbarians from Terranium. Um, that scene where a dozen teams refuse to take the mission to save people. How did you come up with so many te two-man teams and how hard was it? I didn't come up with them really. I just drew characters. They're not like... I can draw characters 
pretty easily. I don't need to put that much work in it. Just draw, you know, just start drawing and whatever comes out. So yeah, it was just, I just thought it'd be funny if they were based on, you know, themes like have kind of a horror uh, themed one, a caveman themed one, uh, a sort of Asian themed one, a uh, poo, the poo Barians, who I think are my favorites, the two poo guys. Um, a Davi88 asks, what are you giving Joyce for Xmas? Uh, <laughs> gonna learn her some respect. No, uh, um, well, she's not, I don't actually hook up with her again until January, because she's at home right now visiting her family, so I can't, uh, I can't give her her gift yet, and that's not to say that I haven't bought it yet, but it's very possible I haven't even bought it yet. In a big way, because it's so expensive to go out and fly, uh, uh you know, and go and, and be with her, I think there's like a mutual understanding that we, if we you know, when we do that, when we have, have a vacation around Christmas time, that kind of is the gift. So she's only going to get token things from me, really. Um, so yeah, I, I can't say on live stream in case she's watching, which is definitely the real answer. And it's not because I haven't gotten it yet. It's because she might be watching. All right, is this fixed yet? No, it's not. All right, that's crap. Uh, all right, well, the whole the whole um, shot, the, the Cintiq has stopped working, basically. Which is not good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit save. Does it work on the does it work on on Flash? Let's, go, let's try that out. Let's open up Flash. No, my my Cintiq is crashed. Okay, so my screen that I drawn this big thing, this big thing here, uh, the drivers need to be rebooted, which is not. Not awesome, not great for a live stream. I'm gonna try and do that now, guys. And uh, what can I put on? What can I? I could show you a little something while I'm doing that, I guess, that I've been working on. Let me see, let me open up my drivers and I'm just rebooting drivers, guys, while uh, something opens up in Flash. And then hopefully we'll be back to uh, animating in a minute. And I can at least get this shot, if not finished, get it kind of close to being finished. And, uh, and that would be good. That would be good. All right, I'm restarting drivers while Flash is chugging away here, trying to open something up. Did you try animating on paper like you asked about or talked about? Yes, Davi88. I did. I did, actually. Uh, I can show you. I gave up very quickly. Gave up very quickly. Where are my, my drawings? See you guys. I bought the light box. Um, and I got the animation paper. You see the, the fancy... The fancy animation paper. Uh, God damn it. OBS is like fucked up now. I think you saw my butt crack when I got up. That's no good. Okay, my computer is not... Oh boy. <laughs> My computer is not having fun right now. Ah, this is bad. Okay. Alright. Sorry if it chugged there. So I got the animation paper. I got a whole, a whole stack of that. And I got the peg bar. And I got a light box as well. And I tried doing some animation on paper. And it was, it was really hard. I've done it before and it didn't look good. And I tried doing it. I tried, I tried doing, um, that's, that's Jessica Rabbit, if you can't tell, doing a kind of hideous dance with her eyes all bugged out. And I was having fun drawing that, and I was going to make her, like, do a little loop, but it's, you can't easily correct things. Once you've inked it, I was inking this because it's the only way it would scan and look good. Not, not fun. But I'm, I might take my light box actually, because uh, I gotta go back to my mum's house in a couple hours, because uh, I'm gonna stay there for Christmas. I may take my uh, setup and um, and uh, and do some there, and that would be fun. I can share that with you guys. Yeah. All right. Well, this is not. Um... Oh, this is not happening with the with the PC. 
so I pretty much crashed. All right, this is probably this is probably one of the reasons I can't live stream as often as I would like. It's, it is the computer setup. I forget until I actually do it again how awful the computer is. Okay, all right, all right. Well, there we go. Um, I will open up the animation software Kakani that I was using earlier. Actually, this uh, shot right here is the one that we're going to be. Um, And turn it down is the one that we're going to be finishing this one here with Kilgar. Uh, where is it? No, no, no! Kilgarian hearts pump boiling acid and are in their groins, idiot! Slam! So there you go. That's what we're working on. But uh, yeah, I got some shaky animation here. It's very shaky. I don't know what the yellow background's about. That's just, I just I threw that up earlier so I could see. I think I was doing some color fills. So uh, this is this is really rough animation. It's it's colored, but I did it super fast because I've been cutting a lot of corners lately, but maybe you think it's okay. So your unstoppable armored eating machines that don't sleep. Just where is the Kilgarian weakness? The Kilgarian heart. At least mine, anyway. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to stop it there. Because there's a big animated sequence. It's a 10 second shot, which is pretty long for me. But with Kilgar talking. But you know what? I don't want to give too much away. I think you guys... I think you've had enough of a free preview. Or a free view, as we call it in the biz. And... And I should get back to work animating. So, there we go. All right. Um, okay. Slamming the sliding door cracks me up. I love it. Thank you, Holocad. Yeah, I actually do. I want Kilgar to uh, grab the metal door, struggle for a minute as he tries to close it, and then sl it slams it, and he leaves like finger dents in the door. Like he completely just completely just hulked out on the door and fucked it up somehow rather than just hit the button and let it close naturally uh, something about that it's one of those things where it makes me laugh the idea and then i realize it's like three days to animate and i wish i hadn't come up with that stupid idea that's ruined half my week and people are going fuck you harry where's the cartoon and i'm you know cartoons is hard cartoons is work what can i tell you Oh, this uh, okay. Okay, good. We we've got we've got the Cintiq back. It's working again. Now I just need to have it so that when I hit file, it actually loads. There we go. Uh, all right, there's our file. All right. So people are saying in the chat. Uh, oh, they were getting into it. That's cool. I'm glad you're getting into it. Uh, I look, man. God damn! I just fucking animation. I have, I have so many ideas for these characters. I I know people think... I don't blame them for thinking Starbarians is pretty lame. Because there's the, 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 there's very few episodes. The episodes that do exist are basically just them on the ship talking about something. But my god, I have hundreds of ideas for characters and storylines. Really big storylines. Really epic ones with tons of, you know like battles and stuff but very human small stories that are just two or three characters and you know in one location i have i think a lot of ideas for jokes and i'm not saying all these ideas are good by the way i'm just saying i have numerous ones i'm sure half of them are crap if not a lot more than that probably 90 percent of them are garbage anyway the idea is that i'm trying to express here with my big fat stupid mouth is that i have a lot of ideas for these characters in this universe but i can't do it because it takes so long to make and that's probably why I should be, you know, totally changing careers and trying to raise money and just, you know, pay other people to do it. But I don't, you know, I don't know how you do that stuff. And I, that's, I have been talking to people about that lately and, and trying to get that whole thing rolling. Uh, some people that are, um, well, that, some of them are local, some of them aren't, but uh, some producer types. And I've been, yeah, I mean, it'll happen one day because I got a lot of ideas. Anyway. Enough lamenting your situation, you lucky, well-fed lump. You you run a semi-successful Patreon where people give you money to fart around and make what you want to make. 
I gotta stop griping. My situation is pretty damn good. I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm a happy man. I'm ecstatic all the time. Can't you tell? I'm joyous. I'm very lucky. Yeah, I don't. A lot of people throw out like, "Ooh, you should, you should pitch it to Netflix." Netflix would not touch me with a ten foot barge pole. I don't think. Maybe they would, but I'd have to compromise what I wanted to do. That's a big part of it too. Is I don't want to make it too safe. I like the idea of it being edgy and you know politically incorrect and a little bit gross and silly. But something like Netflix, who are very socially progressive and modern, and I don't think really want to rock the boat too much. I have a feeling they wouldn't want to be into something like that unless it was brought more up into um it polished up a bit which is not really what i'd like to do that's not what gets me excited but i i gotta be honest i probably would rather be able to tell all those stories in a slightly cleaned up way uh as opposed to not tell them whatsoever because of being a stubborn mule who wants to do everything his own way so there's certainly upsides to every uh every um scenario i guess Okay. Oh, bit too cheesy. I shouldn't be talking about, you know, all the things I want to do in the future. Well, the episodes I have planned, you should just make them. It's really cheap to talk about it. I, I, I got to say, I think that whole, the idea of don't talk about something, just, just do it. I think, uh, you know, if you, and if you don't, if you, if you do talk about it, you, you somehow waste your time you waste your energy you and somehow take away some of that drive and ambition to do it for real i do think there may be some truth to that so I should probably shut up ah okay all right let's do so we've got one more frame left, but I'm going to see if I can use Kakani's auto in-betweening feature, which is pretty cool. See if I can actually get this to look a bit better. Um, it's not as cool as it sounds, but it's pretty cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is throw up. <laughs> what I'm going to do is throw up to begin with. Just vomit. Uh, I'm going to try to, on my other monitor here, I've got my navigator screen. Um... And then try to try to do that some justice. So what I'm doing now is I'm redrawing all of the lines on the previous image in a new position. And seeing if we can get something that looks a bit better. Uh, not a bit better, but sorry, a bit uh, a bit close to the original. Oh, and we want it to clean it up. We want to make it better, but uh, something that looks close to what we've drawn underneath here, and at the same time is actually going to work as an in between that we can. I'm just saying words, guys. Ignore the sentence. It doesn't mean anything. All right, let me ask. Ah, uh, how did my brain stop working? Let me answer some questions. Shark Alien says it's like masturbation. Yeah, it is, in a way. Just talking about things you're going to do creatively or that you'd like to do. It's like, I, let me tell you about... <laughs> let me tell you about all the sex I want to have. It's just, no. It's, do it, you know, genuinely. Or uh, or don't just, you know, yeah. Yeah, the masturbation uh, analogy is, is a good one, I think. Bit of an icky one, though. I mean, geez. Um, Terranium asks, how do you feel about using 3D reference for 2D drawings? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not a purist in any artistic discipline. I don't care how you get it done. If you like what you're doing and you like the results you're getting, you just get it done however you need. And I mean in terms of art. I don't mean, I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean, you know, terrorism. Like, I don't care how it happens. You fight for change. 
No, I mean in terms of art, pursue the art that you want to make the way you want to make it. I'm, I'm not going to give you a uh, uh, any rules or regulations uh, when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, thank you, Team Vizza, for your compliments on Kilgar's nose. Uh, Yellow Jacket says, quick question, how much do you draw daily? Well, I don't draw for the sake of it. I draw... Wait. There we go. Like, when I... I'm really glad that people are always sending me bills. <laughs> and they're always sending me, uh, you know, payment due, 12 months uh, over overdue arrears on bill payment. Uh, because it means that I have... I, don't, I cannot show you my address. I have to be very fucking careful about this. Um, but, uh, yeah, it means I get, like... I get like fun I get like fun pieces of paper that I can draw boobs and starbarians on but that the only time I draw anymore for fun is literally where where I have 20 minutes to spare and I'm in a panic so I just like quickly you know uh scribble on a piece of paper or I I just like I'm bored the computer's not booting up I'm waiting for someone to call I have 2 seconds to spare before I have to hop in the shower or something and I just out of complete boredom I draw but I never draw really to practice anymore i end up only drawing for work which is this kind of stuff and i usually spend a good you know 10 hours or so a day doing it so i'm drawing all the time but uh but uh, it's always stuff like that <laughs> People uh, see people have, are appreciating my doodles. Yeah, it's pretty much just, I just draw boobs. I just draw boobs and monsters. I really is, I'm a simple guy. I have simple pleasures. If you leave me alone with a, a pencil and some scraps of paper, I don't care what they can be. They can be bills. They can be, you know, uh, petitions for bankruptcy, whatever it is. I'm going to grab that sucker and I'm going to draw some like buff warriors and some um, boobies on it. That's why I always think it's funny whenever I see these things on uh, on uh, Twitter usually where it's, you know, people telling other people how to draw and they're saying it's usually in relation to how to draw female anatomy. They'll say, it's you know, this is not how the female body works, guys. Uh, you shouldn't draw like that. All I can think of is I am never gonna let somebody tell me how to draw unless they are a, a art, an artist I really respect who can, and it's purely a critique from this is how to improve. When it comes to stuff that I draw for fun, I draw it that way for fun. I'm never gonna change the way that something is drawn for fun for somebody else's benefit because I'm being selfish in that respect. I'm drawing it for my fun. So I'm not gonna draw something more realistic uh, for your benefit. So I always think those things are funny and I would I can't imagine why people would uh, Give in to them, but some people I guess feel there's like a, a pressure to pe a appease other artists and draw in a way that they find um, You know more accepted. Uh, I don't I don't feel that at all. Fuck that So you see, now, we're drawing this frame very slowly, but the thing about the automatic in-between is, see that we've got only this frame and this frame, this frame and this frame, but... Whoop, ignore where it goes crazy. You see how we can actually... What it's showing us there is almost like a prediction that it's going to be able to smooth those last few frames out. So that's very cool. It takes a lot of extra work, but it's still sl somewhat faster than doing it the old-fashioned way. Oh, it doesn't like that one. Okay. <laughs> 
What did you do to practice when you were practicing? I never practiced really. I had a brief period in my teens where I I did I, I didn't practice. I just drew a lot in my teenage years because I wanted for a couple of years to be a Marvel uh, comic artist. It was always Marvel. It was never DC. I'm sorry. I love DC, but I, I wanted to draw Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men. Um, and I realized, like, whoa, I'm not good enough for that. Those guys, a lot of them are really good. Unfortunately, I think the quality in mainstream comic art has dipped pretty drastically over the last couple of years. But it's still, you know, it's still a lot of people working in the industry can draw amazingly well. And and I, I realized, well, I'm not at that point. I have to get better. So I just furiously drew uh, from comic books, from, from life, whatever, really. I just drew and drew and drew. Mostly anatomy, mostly bodies. That was it, really. And by the time I sort of got over really wanting to be uh, a comic artist, I was getting into animation. I was kind of in a way, sort of enjoying that a little bit more. And, um, but by that point that I was animating, I was sort of, I think I, I won't say that my artwork was perfect. It certainly wasn't, but I'd re reached a point where I was good enough to do what I felt I wanted to do in animation. So I did stagnate. I'm probably not a whole lot better drawing now than I was probably about 10 years ago, which is, it's not, that's not a good thing to say. You shouldn't say that, but it's the truth, and I'm not going to lie to you. I, I certainly have stagnated as a the drawer, as a uh, draftsman. But uh, I think other other disciplines I have improved in. I think my writing has gotten better. I just can't show you guys that because, you know, it takes ages to write. It takes ages to animate an idea that I've written. So I'm still, unfortunately, uh, finishing scripts from years ago in some instances. But... Um, yeah, I really only got better at drawing when I sat down and said, okay, I need to figure out how arms work. I need to figure out how legs work. How do you draw a human head and make it not look like mashed potato? So. Terranium asked, how is the progress on the comic? Am I going to finish it after Dogtooth? Oh boy. Yes. I mean, the comic, yes. The comic is going to come out in 2020. I am freaking positive of it because it's comic. It's not a cartoon. I can do a page a day pretty damn easily and it's going to be about 48 pages. So I'll just find a couple months in 2020, hopefully before the summer, and we'll get it done. Uh, for people who do not know this, this is a little, it's not secret but it's not something i've talked about too much um on live stream because i haven't done many live streams recently uh there's going to be a stubarians comic in 2020 not a regular comic but it's going to be um it's going to be uh, a one-off at least for the time being and i hope you buy it And I hope it's worth buying. I hope it's really good. I'm going to try and make it the best uh, comic that I possibly can even imagine. Oh, stupid thing. How will you distribute it? The old-fashioned way, uh, Davi88. The old-fashioned way. Meaning carrier pigeons and prayer. No, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna try and get it sold in stores and online, basically. I'm sure there'll be a digital version as well, but uh, that's not the plan to do that exclusively. I would very much like to have the physical version that exists that you can hold in your large claw-like hands and gaze, gaze at with your large claw-like eyes. So, um, I cannot re read your name a nis a nim a nim a chick uh harry you're using a different program why why the change uh this uh, this program is has some really nice features this is kakani i like using it and i was going to try to i was hoping it would save me some time 
by switching gears. And because I've been chatting to this rabble here on the live stream, um, I have not saved myself any time at all. In fact, made myself a whole lot slower. That's another reason why these live streams have to stop. I've been doing too many of them this year. I've done almost eight. And um, it's just simply too many because it's a waste of time. What I think I should do in 2020 for live streams is do more regular live streams, but do make them short. Like make them an hour long maximum. Try and figure out a piece of work that will take me an hour to complete. So there's a nice payoff at the end of the stream. You can see what the work was that got achieved. And uh, I think that's probably the way to go forward. So. I'm not serious when I say I'm not going to do any live streams anymore. Yeah, it's a two hour stream right now. It's a pretty long one. If we were to make a Kilgar statue, how big would it be? Uh, bigger than life size. And I picture Kilgar to be 8,000 feet tall. Hogstrong is about 5,000 feet tall. No, uh, we... I don't know. I mean... It's a completely hypothetical question because it doesn't exist. So, I mean, if there was a Kilgar, you know, like a, a statue, I'd be like, I don't know, that kind of size, maybe? What is that? A foot, maybe? A foot and a bit? Like 12 inches? A big 12-incher. Harry, be honest. Even though it's slower to work during live streams, you appreciate the love we give. I guess... I guess in... Yeah, maybe. Gregor the Scot says, maybe make them once a month or even every couple of weeks. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Gregor. I think some frequency, but some regularity would be good. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every week. But it should be regular, like a good poo. It should be, you know, this is the day that we live stream on. This is when it's going to be. S you know, set your clock by it if you want, if you want to come on by. Um, what am I doing? Uh, sorry, this software is a bit confusing sometimes. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm looking at my reference image on the other screen. And I just can't figure out that fucking thing. What's that going to look like? Weird. A little bit weird. Like, is this going to... Oh, boy. <laughs> How does that look? It kind of works. It'll work. It doesn't need that many in betweens. It sort of works. Okay. Oh, brother. What's the reference? Oh, it's not a reference. It's my previous frame because we're using Kakani. So you have the navigator panel telling you which line you need to draw next. So that's why I'm look gazing off screen like some weird uh, dream, dream struck zombie man. Um, so, um, what FPS, says Senator Grape? Well, I animate typically at around 12 FPS, which is what we call, in the animation biz, we call that a 2. Uh, but yeah, the, the cartoons are always 24 frames a second, but I usually animate on 2s, meaning uh, every frame takes up, every drawing takes up 2 frames. If that makes sense. 
few find that to be logical. A lot of people don't seem to know what twos mean, but it's pretty simple, basically. Every cartoon is going to be at 24 frames a second. A two just means that uh, the drawing takes two frames. So when you're watching it, on an animation on twos, if you're watching it back, you're essentially watching 12 frames per second. But you can mix and match. You can have a couple of drawings take up two frames each, and then have one drawing take up one frame, which would be a one. And then you could have a couple of drawings take up three frames each, which, which would be a three which is closer to like, I don't know, maybe eight frames a second or something, which is going to look pretty damn choppy. I don't tend to do that. I prefer the smooth animation, which I think uh, really bottoms out at 12 FPS or animating on twos. Um, uh... Okay, we're nearly done, guys. Nearly. Coming up to a, the threshold here. And, ooh, 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 this is not good. What have I got to do now? Doesn't want, doesn't want to tell me. Uh... Hmm, so we're going to draw this big sweepy line over here. And have this line like... Uh, right there. All right. Let me see what's happening in the chat. It's gotten a little bit sleepy over here. It's almost like I'm getting tired. It's almost like it's 11 p.m. And I only had five hours sleep. I had more than five. Uh, 60 FPS animation would be madness, Gregor. You're right. Uh, no one in their right mind would do that. I think people have tried, but, you know, it's like, why create that much work for yourself? But the... You could get by with, honestly, I kind of wish that, I guess 30 FPS is the normal for a lot of things. I have wondered about switching frames per second because 30 FPS looks fine on video, but 15 looks better. Nah, no, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to animate at 15 FPS. That's weird. 12 is more bang for the buck. Anyway, um, yeah, 60 FPS 2D animation. Terranium says it doesn't exist. I think people have tried, but they've made, you know, a second or two just to show you what it would look like. And it, you can't, it just like, just goes by and you go, okay, that looks interesting. But uh, it's, it's, to me, it's just too much work. I think um, the closest thing you could probably see to real 60 FPS 2D animation is where people, uh, nerds, have taken animation done on ones and then used software that kind of interpolates frames. I think somebody, um, guy I know called Death Inc. If anyone knows, that he's an online artist. He did a test a while ago where he took Starbarians and interpolated some frames, but it didn't it didn't do it for me because so much of that animation is on ones, sorry, on twos, which didn't really interpolate very well. So only very brief moments would look very smooth, and then it would kind of look like the rest of the cartoon. So it didn't uh, dazzle me. Um, when they can find a way to interpolate animation done on like fully on twos and make it look just like real ones, I think that would be good. I may I may use it then, but uh, I I do not want to work that hard. So it would have to be basically animation done for free through some kind of AI. Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh, okay, shit. And we're nearly coming up to being able to watch this thing back and see if the frames uh, animate in a way that we like the look of. Erase some of those parts. Do, do, do. What's going on in the chat? Um, you're a fan of Scooby-Doo. What do you think of the Scoob trailer? Uh, I think it looks... I like the look of the animation. Uh, I, I don't hate 3D. I think that 3D animation is fine. Um, and I think that this example looks good. I hated the music in the trailer. Uh, but that's not indicative particularly of what will be in the movie. I hope they'll have like a more classic film score in the actual movie. I could be wrong. I liked Fred's design and Scooby's design okay. Sorry, uh, Shaggy and Scooby's design okay. And I didn't mind anyone else, anyone else except for Fred. I thought he looked off. And I, I didn't love the humor. That was a bit in places. The, the, the bit with Shaggy and Scooby looking, licking each other was funny. But I just, I, some of the bits stick out to me as not feeling like congruent with the humor of Scooby-Doo. and uh, or, or particularly appealing to me. And also, I just don't know about this plot with, like, the weird... Wherever they go. Are they on a spaceship? What was happening? I know it's going to have Dick Dastardly in it, which is just odd to me. So, I mean, I'll probably go see it. I like Scooby-Doo. I reserve my uh, opinions until the movie's out. But I, I don't expect to love it. The thing is with Scooby-Doo, and a lot of franchises now are like this, There is there are so many iterations of Scooby-Doo. They have been making this show since the 60s. They have gone really cartoony like a pop named scooby-doo they've gone kind of serious with um like mystery incorporated they've done the live action movies live action spin-off movies They're, like there's so much so many different versions of scooby-doo be cool scooby-doo is completely different to the 60s show which is different to shaggy and scooby get a clue so if they fuck it up and make something awful who cares like, in another five years, there'll be a different version of Scooby-Doo, and then a different version after that. It'll just keep going forever and ever. So, I, I, I like it that they come back to, kind of, ground zero, the, the old 60s style. I like the fact that, like, um, uh, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, which is the new show that looks exactly like the 60s one. I love that. I love how close they created the animation to look like the original show. And I'd like it if they came back to that occasionally and didn't just go forever in some weird direction and never come home. But I don't mind the movie being its own thing because we've had bad, weird Scooby-Doo movies in the past. In fact, we get like one a year. <laughs> the, the recent Scooby-Doo movies have been terrible. But uh, yeah. I say the recent ones. I just mean the, the ones from the last two, three years. I think they, they were really good up until around uh, 2016 or so. I'm going to just copy and paste this hand because honestly, who cares? <laughs> it's going off the screen anyway. Um, let's clean this up a touch. Okay, so there we have it. There are our last two frames. Now, the magic of this program means that we can go save to begin with. Let's delete our reference layer. We don't want that anymore. We don't want you. We don't love you anymore. Be gone, boy. Go home. Remember those sad moments in dog movies where the boy tries to... Uh, for some reason, the dog has to go. Like, the dog's going to get killed if, uh, if it stays. So they have to get rid of the dog. It's going to be, you know... What, whatever, they're going to put it down or something. And the kid 
pretends to not want the dog anymore to try and convince the dog to go and the kid's like i can't even think of a movie that's in but i know i've seen it in movies where the kid is saying like go go boy i don't want you here anymore and he's obviously he doesn't mean that he loves the dog he wants the dog to stay but he, he wants to try and convince the dog for its own good it has to go if you know what the fuck i'm talking about what's your opinion on the steven universe series asks uh ui mcneil or Al mcneil i will assume you've been too busy to watch it i have i have never seen it before doesn't look like my kind of thing it looks like foo foo silly nonsense and i don't like the look of the animation and the fan base from what little i've seen seem to be fucking crazy so yeah it doesn't endear me to it or endear it to me at all uh not interested in that all right so so yeah we got two in-betweens here but 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 with the quick flip see that ignore where it goes crazy you can see that we can actually have the animation settle now it doesn't quite work if we generate let's say we we'll generate two in-betweens uh let's bring up the timing bar where is the timing thing where it go there it is let's pump out two in-betweens do do and make them really favor the final position so we get a quick settle animation so these are all drawn by hand the old-fashioned way and then doosh, doosh, doosh. these two frames have come from nothing it is black magic um but i mean it doesn't animate like like i would probably manipulate this further for example, obviously you've got lots of areas where the animation doesn't work. It needs to be cleaned up. But it's about 85-90% of the way there. Um, let me see. Let's turn on 12 FPS, which is about the rate we're going to be playing it back at. I mean, it looks, it looks okay. It looks tweeny at the end. It always looks a bit tweeny. But we could fix that by randomly generating a frame. Or randomly generating it. Generating a frame. There's nothing random about it fixing it and let's do that now let's fix one frame yeah there's a weird line in the eye there's tons of weird lines it's, it's totally not not good um get that timing bar back where is it All right. Okay, so we're going to take this frame and delete it because we want to create a new keyframe. And now we're going to be uh, fixing some of this stuff. So we got some, some bad bits that sort of overlap. Man, I wish this tool was working correctly. I don't know what this cleanup tool is doing today. It's just not being my buddy. Um, all right, we'll do that for the time being. So we're going to fix up some of these areas. Probably, this is the thing, you want some overlap. Um, because the way that things settle isn't sort of natural. Let's get that nav frame back on my other monitor. <laughs> Beat it, you! Wow, wise guy, eh? Um, I feel like I feel like all the hair should be redrawn. The hair isn't floppy enough. It sort of doesn't have any drag. It's the way it just like casually goes back to where it started doesn't doesn't sit right with me and clean up the chin there and And we're going to let's 
something like that. Now, what are we gonna do? Ah, uh, yeah, it's the. Want it to kind of Oh sorry guys, I'm not talking. This is the problem. When I get when I get into it, I can't talk. And I am not a fun host. I am not the host with the most. I become the beast with the least. Uh, let me see something in the chat that I can talk to. Um, your animation style reminds me of some shows from Adult Swim. Uh, are there any inspiration from there for your work? I mean, a lot of those shows took their inspiration from maybe the eighties. The like, well, Space Ghost is obviously like based on the Hanna Barbera show from the sixties. Adventure Bros is kind of a little bit GI Joe, a little bit. Johnny Quest, um, is it Johnny Quest or Joe 90? I get those confused. Johnny Quest. So there's a lot of Johnny Quest in 80s cartoons and there's a bit of 80s in my cartoons. So I, I, it's all it shares inbred DNA in a way. So I think that makes uh, sense to me. Uh, you should draw the hair to show the arc better, says Normie twice removed. Well, that's kind of what I'm doing, buddy. Where I'm having it drag. Let's. Uh, this, this is part of the problem too, and just animating like this way, you are. Uh... Ah. It's just, it's very, I, I don't like, my brain doesn't work in this way of, uh, of sort of drawing sort of out of order like this. So it's, it's tough. Um, I think I get what you mean. Um, Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, uh, well, hang on, hang on. Something like that. Okay, all right. Can, uh, oof, this is not. This is. It's so tough to to handle all those sort of bits and pieces and make them flow together. Um, All right, all right, all right. Okay, uh. <laughs> Turn off the onion skin, because it's driving me crazy being able to see all those details. And try and connect up some of those bits and pieces. All right, so that, that sort of is gonna, I think, give us now a better final frame. And we can generate on our timing one more in between. Thanks. Click 
fix this eye up. This eye here too. Oh boy, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff happening on the face I haven't looked at yet. I'm going to join up his armor there a little bit better. I have that brow popping off there. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, you've all been extremely patient if you stuck this one out because this has been very boring. I've just sat here in silence and tried to wrestle with this shot. But I think we're at the point we can probably watch it back in motion. It's an extremely short motion and an extremely short movement. But uh, it's a necessary one nonetheless. Weird line there going through the nose. Let me see now. Ah, it's all right. <laughs> it's so fast and stupid, but oh gosh. What if we add in one more in between here? It probably needs more in betweens. I'm just lazy. Uh, more in-betweens at the start. It's the start that's really confusing. Look how fast that is. That's just, like, nothing. Whoosh! Um, what if we made that another keyframe? This is th part of the problem, too, with doing live streaming uh, of animation. Is that, like, not everything I do is going to be good. And then at the end of the stream, people are... I've been waiting patiently. Harry, what have you done? Does it look good? Oh, it doesn't. I just wasted two hours for you to work on a shot that looks like crap. Um... That is sadly part of the... Alright, how does that look? Yeah, I just think that's unnecessarily smooth at the end when the beginning of the shot is so choppy. I feel like the, the hair... Doo -doo. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this frame and I'm gonna make one more... It's a silly change, but I just want the hair. Like the hair, this part of the hair here, it f f flies forward and then bounces all the way back and then starts to come forward again. But then the tail of the end of the hair never has a moment of overshooting after. It has one overshoot. I feel like I should just overshoot the hair a little bit. Oh boy. God knows if it'll work. Oh boy. Let me see what's going on in the chat because I feel like it's gotten very dry. Ah, Terranium's like, it's good to go. It's good to go. Yeah, the hair does look stupid in one frame. You're right, Davi88. But I just got a... <laughs> There's a tangent with the hair and the fur. Oh, yeah, you're right. But I want to go to bed. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> I want to be done. Um, I mean, there we go. If I just move that up. A little bit those two frames sort of undoes a tangent right um you know what i'm gonna render that out just as pngs call it done 
controversially call it done and uh and probably head on my merry way kind of merry not that merry um so let's hit save to begin with and then we're gonna render out uh export image let's just do basic yeah just like do bog standard fucking images blah blah blah, blah. Okay, uh, images exploited. Good. Let's close Kakani up. If anybody knows, by the way, how to say Kakani, it could be Kasani or Sasani or Sakani. I call it Kakani. I'm going to go with Kakani, but uh, I could be wrong about that. And we're going to export or, excuse me, import our frames. And, oh, what? What's going on there? What's going on there? We don't want just one frame. Let's open Kakani back up. It didn't export them all, it exported one frame. Genius. Pure genius. You're right. Okay, Terranium Terranium is completely uh uh completely correct. He says Actually I, I don't know if Terranium is a uh, guy or not, I assume. Um Terranium says, the sad, yeah, you're right, was crushing. You need to stop being a perfectionist. You talked about this last month. You need to put things out rather than fine-tuning things no one sees. Well, yes, and again, you are right. That is another, there's a lot I enjoy about live streaming. I like being able to quickly put something out. Maybe live, maybe live streaming animation is a bad idea. Because the thing about animation for me is like, like it's like a performance in a way i want to show off so i want to give a really good performance but it's not the only way i perform i also want to perform with voice acting and writing and comedy and timing and all these other things so i um i should let the animation you know be a bit more basic in places so i can perform on other levels and the thing about live streaming is it's also a kind of a weird performance but I fall into the trap of if the animations, if, I, if the animation that is done on the live stream isn't good, I feel like people are shortchanged. Like they're gonna look at it and go, like, oh, this guy's a fraud. Is that he can't animate for shit? And the stuff that he's doing on live stream doesn't look very good. Uh, and I guess I worry about that. So what probably would be a good thing for me is to just, just animate in my own time, on my own, you know, with only me to watch it, only me to criticize it for me to let little things go that wouldn't be an issue to other people and live stream still because it's a nice way to, to catch up with people it's a nice way to talk to you know the, the viewer base and connect with you guys but not talk to people uh not not live stream animation actually live stream video games live stream a bit of beast wars on ps1 okay what's wrong with that that's not so bad so maybe that's something i could try in the new year uh, next decade, in fact. <sighs> what are you... Fl what the... What are I can't tell who you're asking what is talking about what. Um, Beam light. All right. How do you do that thing in Flash where you move? Ah, there we go. So yeah, here we go. It's just Kilgar screaming no, basically. And it lasts four. Da, 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 da. 0 0.8 seconds. And this live stream only took three hours. Although I was, you know, I could have done that probably in an hour had I not been talking. Um, what's going on with the top of the head? Oh, why is it? Hmm. 
doesn't like. Why is that? I don't know what's going on here with the. Uh, Uh, I don't know what's going on here, guys. <laughs> All right. I mean, it still looks okay, but it's obviously quite off center. I don't know how you correct that. Um, yeah, obviously it's like down here when it should be up and to the left, but you get the idea. No, no. I do wonder about Kakani. It's so smooth. The few frames at the end, like they're so perfectly clean. There's no wobble or anything on them. There is an option where you can randomize the lines a little bit, but it makes them too random. Like, they actually go... They should have allowed you to um, choose um, like a level of random uh, chaos to actually add into the uh, into the animation. Like, that at the end, it's just a little bit too smooth. But, I hate to say it because uh, it took three hours almost. That's about where we are right now uh, after a three-hour stream, which is a little bit pathetic, <laughs> if, I be, if I be honest with you. Um, I don't know why I uh, turned into such a yokel there, but yeah, if I'm honest with you guys, it's a little bit pathetic. But that's why I'm thinking that maybe um, maybe if I, uh, if I could uh, do a... Do maybe a live stream where I'm not animating. It could be a little bit more fun, because then there wouldn't be the whole concern about making it look so good on the live stream. Because I can always correct it later on. Anyway. Um, Davi88 says so it looks like he's doing the Trump. Wrong. It's totally wrong. I know all the best ways to be right. I'm the best person at being right. And you guys are so wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Kilgar and Trump would be... I think they'd be. They get on pretty good, those guys. They'd be good pals. Um, vote Kilgar 2020. Uh, all right. So... Um, I, you guys are talking about stuff I don't understand. T talking about tofu broth. It was so lovely to be with you today. I am sorry that the uh, quality of the stream was uh, a little bit slipshod in places. I ranted. I rambled. I went on odd tangents. We had odd tangents in the artwork that had to be corrected. Things touching each other. Look up tangents in artwork if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's something to look out for in your own work. But... Uh, I just want to say that even though 2019 has been an ultimately pretty bitterly disappointing year in terms of uh, the content I've put out, I think there's a silver lining in that 2020 will be a fair bit better. But one of my New Year's resolutions is I don't want to make promises I know I can't, unless I know I can, can keep them. I basically want to uh, flex or improve the muscle of being uh, of being someone who is of their word. I want to make sure that if i tell you guys what i think or what i want to do that um i don't make any promises regarding that and, unless i know i can stick to them so uh, i think i can do a lot more in 2020 i guess it remains to be seen but i've got some cartoons nearly finished which are going to be good to go in early 2020 so that's exciting guys thank you so much this will probably be my last stream uh before the end of the year unless i for some reason do a weird one before new year's we'll see about that but thank you so much for coming by appreciate you all um, thank you for another good year. Let's have a much, much better near year next year. Have a much better year next year. There we go. That's what I meant to say. Um, and I hope that if you celebrate Christmas, you have a great one. If not, have a happy new year. Take care, everybody, and uh, good night. I would. This would be the time that I would bring up OBS and select my ending animation, but my computer is frozen. There we go. There we are. Take care.